Hello, sumo fans. We are back. My goodness, have we got a Banzuke this time around. This will be much more interesting than your typical Banzuke. It's like doing a really complicated math equation yes. on a giant chalkboard, and you ask, you know, the kid in the back of the room, can you solve for X? <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I drank this like... <laughs> like honey nectar just i was like oh there's so much going on there's so much craziness and i had a i had this real big like nostalgia for like it was only a couple months ago but the july banzuke the july basho such one of the most wild tournaments we've seen in a long time and so i'm going through this and like and then like the memories of all the craziness that happened in july are like going through so i am just i feel really really pumped this time around more so than normal which i'm like i'm already like you know how do you go higher than 10 i don't know i'm found a way well you know with everything that happened in july we're guaranteed to have a crazy september right yeah well just something's the way they set this up something's gonna happen it's, it has y- to happen yeah because of the choices they made as far as where they put people you're gonna see some people getting crushed oh, or excelling beyond the wildest dreams it's, there's it's going to be back-to-back barn burners, and that usually doesn't happen. This this might be the the one that sorts things out, though. There's there there will be some there will be some corpses at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we start right up at the top with Terra no Fuji? As usual, he is the only Yokozuna, making him Yokozuna East. Eleven and four. He's not the invincible monster that he was when he first rose but he's still one of the most formidable foes you're gonna come across he's still the man to beat and the big thing was he was able to hold his defenses better in july which means that the injuries and any sort of stressors the covid the whatever hit him he's he's rebounding from it it's still you know it's always gonna be how are your knees today where's your egg timer at if he does another performance like he did in july He's he's the Yokozuna we all know. He really wants to keep piling on Yusho. Now, I had speculated that he would stop at 10. Who knows? I mean, I think he'll just go until he can go. But all we know is that his goal is just to collect as many as he can until timer's up. Yeah. Now, I, I he did mention earlier in the year that he wanted the double-digit goal, which he now can't attain because there's only two Yushos left and he's at 7. So I, he's going to be desperate to at least yeah, claim the next two. It's so, yeah. So either one is he just going to want to claw his way to get as close as he can, or is he going to realize he's already missed the goal and he's going to let off a little bit? Though letting off is not in Terra Fuji's vocabulary. If That's I'm going to be honest, maybe this yeah. is not something to worry about. But it, it, it's one of those like, oh, you missed it. Oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm curious now. Right, we're going to see a. A new side, perhaps, or maybe the exact same guy and just yeah. a little bit turned he's, up. I feel like he's the man to beat just the way he fought before. And July was just such a crazy happenstance of things that he just got out outdone. Yeah. And maybe to your point, maybe that'll set the fire. Maybe he's like, okay, you, you punks. Every time he loses, he seems to come back stronger. He's like a mm-hmm. super saiyan mm-hmm. or something. You know, so I expect him to be in really good shape and to do well, especially because we saw him, you know, on the summer tour. And, you know, it's not such intense training, but at the same time, it's the first time we've seen Terra no Fuji train with other guys because he doesn't show up to those interstable practices. So, you know, he looked fine. There weren't any concerns like in past, like Hakuho would show up and then not train. Mm -hmm. We didn't see anything like that going on. So hopefully that's a sign that everything's good. We're going to have a Yokozuna to compete with, which makes everybody else try that much harder. Yep, it, it's going to just raise the playing field. So next we have Taka Keisho, Ozeki 1 East, also 11-4. and four. He revived the Ozeki Prestige, but like everything else, there's always a question mark next to Taka Keisho's yep. name. Yeah, the, July was like the Ozeki tournament, which we didn't think that was possible. Especially how it started. It's, it was a mess. Just a disaster. And, like, you, you see the 11-4 and four next to Takakesha, you're like, oh, he probably did a good time. Of it. But, like, that was salvage. That was that was pure sumo spirit, him just clawing those wins out. And 
it is the big question mark. So it's like you guys can do it. You know, he took the mantle of Ozeki and now it, like it meant something in July. And that was such a that was part of what made it such a great time. Yeah. And he, you know, he figured in at the end, you know, but he wasn't runner up. He wasn't he was like just a little bit short of actually being in the tournament conversation. But at least he's where an Ozeki should be is, oh, you know, the Ozekis were fighting it out with the Yokozuna. But it's not where he wants to be. He wants to be, like, neck and neck fighting for the title every single tournament and hopefully winning another one. What was nice was he seemed very relaxed and, like, he was having a good time at the summer tour. I hadn't seen Takakesho laugh, obviously, because sumo tournaments are a different thing. It's a different feel, yeah. But he's smiling, he's laughing, he's taking pictures, he's talking to the kids. Maybe he just needs a little bit of you know, socialization because he wasn't going to any of the inner stable ever since Hakuho destroyed him before his Yokozuna bid. He has not been a presence at inner stable practices. Hmm. I don't know if it's because he thinks it's bad luck. I don't know if it's because he just doesn't want to subject himself to that mentally. But this is the first time he's been with the other wrestlers again. And, I'm really hoping that means something for this tournament. Yeah. I think that's going to be one of the big X factors that we had this, the the summer tour, the Jungyo, like I think they call it. And that's probably one of the biggest returns to normal we've had since the pandemic. Now we had the, we sort of had the one end of the spectrum where we had like the no crowds and then we had the no tournament in May of 2020. And then there's been like this people trickling in, but now this was the meet and greet with your fans this is the get to put on the show. You're going on tour. Get to interact socially with the other wrestlers there in a much more laid back environment. I feel like for some people that'll be like a big energy up. It looked like the way that Takakesha was very hands on, engaged, involved. That this is what he wanted, and he can get energy from that. On the flip side, there are some people that maybe benefited from relaxing, from not having to go on tour, from having a few weeks to themselves. Right, to do like their kind of to training. To do their training, to do their rest and recoup. So I'm. it'll be interesting to see how this affects the momentum of people involved. I think for Yokozuna and Ozeki, in some ways it's more important because they're figures. Everybody's supposed to know who they are and they're supposed to exude a certain aura. How can you exude that aura if the fans never see you? Mm -hmm. Except for tournament days and you're not doing that good. So it might give him a little bit of a boost. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm Ozeki. Let me show it. Yeah. But of course, I'm slightly concerned that on like one of the last days of the tournament, Takakesho got sick and went back home. Yeah. Hopefully that was nothing. I've heard nothing about COVID. So yeah, if it was COVID, they would have said something. That's, right. Exactly. They, they announced those. Yeah, I know. It's like a... Yeah. It's a thing now. Yeah. yeah, optimistically, he got his being sick out of the way, and he'll be fine. That's the hope. That's yes. the hope. So now we'll go to Shodai. He is slightly up now. Ozeki 2 West, 10 and 5. We discussed this in the recap, but it, it bears repeating. Shodai looked like he was down and out. A lot of fans were like, ha, 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 he's going to lose his rank. He comes back with a 10 and 5. <sighs> In a way, it's disappointing because he's not being the strong Ozeki. But in another way, he's very, very interesting and exciting. And he does what you want your Ozeki to do. Like, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Goedo and Takayasu, when they were down, they were down. They didn't have the ability to come back and be 10 and 5. It's a weird thing he's got going here. Um, so, who knows with him? It's like... Put his name mm. in a hat and shake it yeah, up. I honestly, I expect him to just go right back to Kaidoban. <laughs> I'm, I've, I've had help for him before. I don't know. I gotta, I gotta try being pessimistic. I gotta mix this deck up. Oh no, um, pessimistic John. So, so here's the flip side of that, and we had mentioned this in the recap that when Shodai was eight and five when he cleared Kaidoban because he was like that one and five and he goes on that crazy seven and five run, um, and then his last two matches were against the title contender and against Terra Nafuchi, and he won both of those. Big so deal. if like if he if he was just in it for those eight wins, he would have taken a knee, particularly against Terra Nafuchi. But the fact that it was a ten and five instead of an eight and seven means that like Shodai wants this. 
it's, it's just confused as to how to keep it. He doesn't know how to keep it, and it seems that the only thing that really motivates him is when he is right at that cliff. Yeah. And until he can show us, prove me wrong, by the way, Shodai, get 12 and 3 you show, and I will look like a right fool. Make me look like a fool and get 12 and 3 this tournament. Outside of that, another 6 and 9. Right, and then we're doing the, doing the doing the Katabon carousel all over again. I'm I fully expect that out of him, and I would absolutely love to be wrong on this. That's where the gut goes. That's what the opinion is. To tell me again, please, I, for the love of Pete, <laughs> prove me wrong. Go to find whatever Shinto spirit of doubting Shodai, <laughs> and just just divine wrath me on this one. Yeah, here's the thing. You know, we'll we'll express some pessimistic views, but we don't want them to be right. No, I want this to be wrong. But this is like, if you want, like, here's opinion number three for Shodai. He's back in the wheel. Yeah. Um, and it's up to him to break the cycle at this point. Yeah, be the Ozeki he's meant to be if that's really where he belongs. Uh huh. Which brings us to <laughs> uh, Mi Takiyumi, the Lord of Chaos himself. That is a really good name for him. Okay, so we got two, five, and eight. He was Kadoban. So let's let's discuss the controversy, but then let's also throw it away. So at the time that this happened, he's Kadoban. He gets COVID. It was real sketchy how he was ever even tested for it, whatever. But the point is, he was kind of the first guy to go down, and it seemed like he was going to get this, this freebie because he obviously was injured. He, there was very low likelihood he was going to get a winning score on his own. And he got the COVID save. With that being said, then everybody else went down. Mm-hmm. So now you can't really you can't really pay any attention to you it. You can't pin it on Mitakiumi because if if like twenty percent of all the Rikishi, or it was like a hundred something people got yeah. it at the end. It was I think ne- it was like one hundred and forty four. One hundred forty four, like nearly a third. I don't know the math. Anyway. A whole bunch of people got COVID. This was a mess. So we can't pin that on Mitakiumi. Mitakiumi just gets a little lucky. But he- here's the thing. You got to you gotta do something now. Is he still Kadoban? I know yes. he's Ozeki. Okay. He's Kadoban take two. They basically, because he was unable to fail it properly, he's just re-Kadoban. Okay. So he's still got to clear that injury. Yes. And he's, not only does he have to clear the injury, he has to be an Ozeki. And it's so easy on the outside of Ozeki land to think, oh, I can beat all these guys. There's something that happens once you mm. become Ozeki where it becomes harder. It does become harder. I feel like a fit, healthy, desperate Mitakiumi will clear Katoban. The question is, will he get desperate enough? It, well, he did Henka in the last tournament. That's desperate. That's also dishonorable. I really <laughs> hope that when Takakesho <laughs> fights him, he just reads that like don't ever be tricked by that again because you know me takiyumi will do it so you know that's my bias because i want takiyumi to win but i just you know everybody should know that he's capable of that and then i don't have to beat that dead horse you know Mm -hmm. yeah it's i feel like he has a puncher's chance i feel like mitakiyumi has a chance of doing it he has a chance i i wouldn't say it's a guarantee but i i um it's not like with Shodai that we almost like want to call the funeral home ahead of time. Yeah, exactly. Because Mitakiyumi, he's somewhat stable in comparison. Relatively. But, you know, it's interesting because I think everybody wanted Mitakiyumi to be the next guy. And once again, we don't have it. Mm. It tells you how hard it really is to be Ozeki and how special you need to be to be a Yokozuna. It's Yep, it's just already, what it is. It's already like one in a million to get this high, and now it's another one in a million to get that much higher. Yeah, and it's like you have to appreciate the guys who came before that were able to do it. Because mm-hmm. it looks like it's getting harder and harder for us to find anybody who's even a fraction of what those guys were. Yeah. So, you know, we could get down on Mitaki Yumi, or we could just look at it as reality is she just doesn't have it. He doesn't, he doesn't have it until he gets it. Yes. And then once you get it and you know and you you're not gonna let anybody take it from you, that's when you become Ozeki. And then you gotta ascend even higher if you wanna be Terano Fuji. Yeah. Just tells you how great Terano Fuji is. Yeah, it is it's a nice reminder. Sometimes you, you get you get Terano Fuji complacent almost. You're just like, Oh yeah, it's Terano Fuji, of course he throws people around. But it's like, um that's 
the first time we've seen that in a very, very, very yeah. long time, and we might not see it again for another 20 years. Could be a long time. <laughs> so, now to Wakataka Kage. Eight and seven. There was nowhere really for him to go, so he has to maintain his rank. Maintain rank. Uh, yeah, when you're at Sekiwaki 1 East, you you there's only one way to go higher. Right. You've got to put together that string of 10 wins to make it in with the elite class. So he'll be he'll probably be stuck there for a little bit unless he goes on a tear. Yeah. So it's so looking at now that we're in Sanyaku, we will point out what likely everybody knows, which is we have a third Sekiwaki and a third Kamasubi. Yes. Which is very wild and I'm absolutely in love with this. What where this matters for Wakataka Kage is now like beforehand he was like head of the roost of four people. Now he's head of the roost of six. And he's also coming off of with the eight and seven, his Ozeki run is dead and buried. So he has to start from scratch. This is now his opportunity to tell all these other all these other up and comers, whippersnappers, and aspirants <laughs> who is top dog. That's yeah. This is his chance, like, cause he's got, he's not chasing Ozeki runs anymore. He's not going anywhere. He's stuck at one East. So now is sort of his opportunity to be like, I may not be going higher, but neither are you. Right, like he has to stomp everybody else. Stomping down. everybody. I feel like not only is this the perfect way to handle what this mess is, but it's the perfect way to restart. For him to get a double digit win off of the backs of everybody around him. Well, we had been talking about the log jam, and it's nice that pretty much all the people who belong in Sanyaku are now in Sanyaku. Yeah. So now they can fight it out in Sanyaku versus I need to get in there. Now it's like, can you stay there? This is this is what's gonna be so much fun, is basically they went to the wrestlers and be like, Okay, everybody's in. Now Now what? Now it's like this is what you wanted, right? <laughs> and then they and then they sort of do that thing that they're like really really smiling like politely. <laughs> You're like, mm. <laughs> well, the interesting thing too will be is will they keep some of these spots if guys have close records and need to drop, or you know will they bring or will these spots just become eliminated right after this? Is this like I, your only chance? I I fully expect there to be four Sanyaku slots in November. Okay, that's my feel on this. That they that that, that whenever they open up historically for the. I don't know, few years that we've been doing this. Two-year anniversary, by the way. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, happy yeah. anniversary Thank you. to us. Thank you for sticking with us for two years now. Wild. That's anyway, crazy. Wild. So the two years, and then we, we watched, before we did the podcast, for a couple more years. Every single time they open up an extra Sanyaku slot, it is reclosed. So yeah. whoever's in those falls out. It's it's like clockwork. So I'm, like, so I'm seeing two open slots. I'm like, ooh, that's two... Two people on this list are going to get kicked back out, and it's only going to be on them. It's cutthroat. Yeah, so it like, seems like they've given you a gift, but really, it's, it's a gift with strings attached. I know. It is It is a, you asked for this, now we're giving it to you. Um, by the way, here's what you actually got. And it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Somebody's going to be hurting. <laughs> and so, in a, I'm looking at Wakataka Kage, who's probably the safest. Like He can even get like a 7 and 8, and he... Unless everybody else gets it, like he'll be, he'll be good. He'll be up there. But again, like here's his here's his chance to sort of look at the people around him and sort of kick him off the ladder. Oh yeah, look it's, look down and yeah go, yeah yeah just, 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 just a few a few uh, a few boot soles to knuckles. Yeah, I mean it's what you do. It's what you do when you're clawing to the top. So that that's Wakataka Kage's motivation. So you just 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 throw away the old Ozeki one and start a new one. Yep, this is a new tournament. So, next we have Hoshuryu. He is up from Kamasubi 1 East to Sekiwake 1 West. Is this a new rank for him? New uh, high new rank. High yep. rank? Okay, I thought so. Yeah, it's, he is... Him touching Sekiwake is his new highest record. Which now, once again, the only he can only go up to Sekiwake 1 East. So, you know, he's running out of space. Yeah. But in the, in the recap, we were talking about, oh, he needed to do better, blah, blah, was, blah. And we were wrong, which was good. Good to be wrong. Yes, we were looking at this. Not, I wasn't expecting this. I Me either. I didn't think. I had looked at it, and they're like, "Well, they can't really move Daisho, and if you move him down, then he's in Kamasubi. That's kind of a big deal." Uh, and then you look at Hoshiryu, just like, "Well, Wakataka Kage is eight and seven. He's not moving." So sorry, Hoshiryu. 
nothing happened for you. But then they opened up the rank. They, they what they did is they they let Daisho stay in Sekiwake, but then as compromise, they gave him Sekiwake two, and then they, for Hoshiro's nine and six, they bumped him up. Um, it's really it's like you're only making Hoshiro hungrier. Yeah, it's like here you go. We're gonna let you go as close as yeah. you can to the top. Better not lose. Here's yeah, and here's what's interesting now. The only way he can get even higher than he is is to bump out Wakataka Kage, who is also looking to restart things by beating everybody up around him. And this is really the future rivalry, Hoshiro and Wakataka Kage. Like they are the ones that are going to be battling it out for the next ten years. It's so it makes it very exciting that they're like there. It, it, they're literally right next to each other. A year ago, we neck. didn't have this. We didn't. Yet. We didn't. So for Hoshiro, a lot of exciting sort of the the gauntlet has been thrown for him, and I feel like that's what he wanted. Oh, he does. He he, he wants he wants to tear apart things and scowl yeah. and and be the top guy and so he's so been he's, given what he wants. He is he is exactly where he wants to be now. And so right now what he now needs is also to start Nozaki run, the two of these guys. That's what that's where they're at right now, and I feel like they both know it, and then they both like it's almost sort of they're almost looking at each other and they're like, we can't both go on an Ozeki run at the same time, can we? One of us is ha- going to have to wait. Well, one of them could knock out one of the other Ozekis. I mean, every single one mm-hmm. of them is vulnerable to... Well, they, both of these guys have been collecting some Ozeki wins. It's That's that's three of the three of the 10 plus wins that you need are right above them. Right. So now they're that much closer. I mean, Hoshiryu's got to exercise his demons against Takakesho because he he usually gets beat down pretty bad even when Takakesho is having a bad tournament. Yeah. Yeah. It's so that that, that the, that's those two Sekiwaki slots are going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fierce competition. Might we see a foreshadowing of things to come at the <sighs> end of the tournament? Perhaps. Keep an eye keep an eye on that rank. Yes. So next we have Daisho 6 7 and 2 covid situation to be fair they just created another spot so he could stay there and he just had covid right there wasn't an injury on top of it all no injury outside of what he, whatever he already had so then he's gonna just do his daisho thing mm-hmm. so uh, to be fair daisho earned his way up to sekiwaki to begin with he did he, he he does seem to be hitting that second wind and it's great to watch and now it's up to him to prove that he's worth the Sekiwaki two slot that they granted him. Right. They're, because they're, if he doesn't, I mean, they will drop him so hard. It's like, we opened a spot for you. Mm-hmm. We're extra brutal. If you don't live up to this the is, standard. this is, this is the them granting a favor mm-hmm. and then expecting it to be repaid. Yes. And Daisho is now sitting on that. And the last time he was in, he was the dark horse in Sanyaku. He did crumble under that pressure, but this is, I don't know if he's going to crumble again. I feel like, like I said, there's six people in here and there's only going to be four in he November. Was, he was pretty, you know, he's, strong and energetic and, and he, he was, yeah, he, he was, he was six and six when COVID hit him. So he was right in it. And you know, that seven and eight, eight and seven, right on that edge so he's where he belongs it's just as they're gonna is he gonna be able to hold his seat there's a lot of people coming for it a lot of people come for the seats but you know he's he's a grinder you know what i mean like he he's not afraid no he doesn't have the nervous energy that shodai has he'll just go out there and throw people and you see what happens i mean when daisho loses it's because daisho Loses on the edge, or Daisho just went all in too hard, and somebody pulled the fast one on him. Daisho doesn't lose because he was tentative. No, no, you'll you'll never catch him hesitating. So next we have somebody who is hesitating. Yes, and it's killing him, and that would be Abi Komusubi One East, up from Komusubi One West, eight and seven. He started off; he had so much momentum from clawing his way up from the bottom. And coming so close in these tournaments. And everybody was like, oh, wow, Abby's the next great thing. And now he's falling apart and he's looking like the old Abby, The one who couldn't get out of Sanyaku. The one who just kept going up and down, up and down. Now he's a lot more serious and he's a lot more focused. 
but he seems to have some confidence issues. He's the one in the Sanyaka group I am most concerned about in terms of performance. Which still eight and seven in Sanyaku is is a tall order on the best of days. But there's something's gotta give here. Right. And somebody can't be there. Somebody can't be there. Somebody's gotta move. And not, you know, not just them, but the people knocking the door down right above him. You know, we've got Kota Nawaka who if he was here the full fifteen, he could have been one of those people. Oh, absolutely. In the Sanyaku. We've got Meisei, who's climbed his way back up. We'll talk about him in a minute. Meisei wants his son, Yaku, slots yes, back. Yes, he does. He wants to be back in Sakiwaki, where he probably feels like he belongs. So, you know, not only... Like, this logjam is only fixed for one tournament. Yeah, you won't see this again. And so, Abi really needs to sort of focus that down and get like get back to whatever, whatever, whatever mental state got him up here. I'm really... I'm with you. I'm really worried that... There is a. I'm almost like calling the funeral home on him already. Uh, almost like if you got to call it, he's a candidate. I feel like there's almost like there's a hunger that he wanted to get back here, and that was the focus. Get right. Back to get get back to where I was before this whole COVID thing got to me, and now that he's here, it almost feels like he he's missing that goal. It's like what am I going to focus on now? And maybe for him, like maybe aiming up to Hoseki's too high for, in his mindset. Maybe. But like that's like he needs to he needs to just in his mind be like I will destroy the rest of you. Right. And get that get that in. And then cuz like I feel like the tactics is new like the new mature Abi I'm doing finger quotes with my <laughs> with my hands. That that is like a, a massive power. Like watching tape nearly like this may be this may be the one that he gets turn of fuji like decisively because he keeps getting closer and closer uh so like there's all these pieces are there but i feel like he just needs that focal point he needs something to focus on and then everything else right because he could put all of his thought process into beating taro fuji and takakesho and then lose to tamawashi or Uh takayasu like it's impossible to devote all of your time to meticulously studying everybody in the bonzake that you're gonna face so the goal might need to be a little be a little bit more well-rounded and adaptable to when somebody reads your moves because his moves are very readable. So we'll see. We'll see what he comes up with, but hopefully he uh, has the desire to do more. If he, if he gets hungry again, I think he can pick up right where he left off. It's just getting the hunger to begin with. He's kind of endo-ish. A little endo-ish. A little bit of endo in there. Well, now we go to our tournament champion, Ichi Nojo, which this was the very fair thing to do. Uh huh. He's up for Magashir 2 West, Takoma Subi 1 West, 12 and 3, winner of the tournament. He's come close before. Finally got it. Finally oh, I'm got so it. So happy to see this. But the question is where? We've never seen Ichi Nojo succeed in this manner. Whereas we've seen other guys like mm-hmm. win a tournament and then disappear for a while. This is a big deal for him. This is something he's wanted, something he's... He got real close to... I still remember. I'm still sore about this. I'm, th- I need to let this go. But, like, <laughs> Ichi Nojo was... It was at 14-1. and one. And then the last match was Hakuho versus Kakuryu. And that was going to make Hakuho 15-0. and 0. And they're like... And then in the, in the back of my head, they're like, let him fight it. Let him fight it. But they're just like, you got to have the Yokozuna match as the last match. I don't, and, I don't think it was just that. I mean, not to be such a controversial person, but I'm going to throw it out there. Hakuho does not like Ichi Nojo. There's this sort of Mongolian mm. rivalry thing. There was even some extra pushing he did to Ichi Nojo. Um, I bet you he had a little bit of say, like, no, he's not Maybe. He's not up to my level. Yeah. Only Kakuryu yeah. is. And because of how the precedent is set, they weren't going to go against They're it. They're going to go against it. Well, regardless of all that, he's got his cup. And so I feel like that that's that's gotta be such a massive boost. And we've always seen it. People who've like won it for the first time, like they're it it it, it, it changes you because that's a mark that they're you You're can, now a tur- you're now a, a, a tournament winner. You're a champion of sumo. Nobody could take that away from you. No Nobody matter what can, happens. Nothing. So put that in our already wild Sanyaku. And that so, does make everything all the more crazy. Now we're now like 
like we were in just in Sekiwaki, we're like, this is gonna be a wild, crazy time. Now we're adding in this whole Ichi Nojo thing. Typically, when somebody wins, there's always that target on their back, and always I would just like, I'm gonna knock this guy down a peg. Like I'm wondering if it's the other way around that Ichi yeah. Nojo is gonna be Ichi Nojo is gonna sort of look around you and be like, you're all gonna be knocked down a peg, not me. Right, because he can beat everyone there. It was the the big deal was beating Terano Fuji. It's something he could not do. That was crazy. So for him to beat Terano Fuji and get the championship, mm-hmm. I mean, that's got to give him some confidence he's never, ever had before. Yeah. I don't... So, very premature. I don't know if they're going to count his 12-3 and three towards a potential Ozeki run. Hmm. I feel like they won't, but it was a you show. I think they have to if it's a you show. I, I don't know how that works. Yeah. I feel like you need to be in the Sanyaku to like formalize it. Oh, I think you do. And that, I think that's but one of the, those rules that... At the same time, if like if Ichi Nojo gets another double digit win where he is right now, like I, I'm going to keep my ear to the ground and hear what they're talking about because like, they'll, they'll, they they love whispering them Ozeki talks. Oh, they, yeah. They, so, they spread that like wildfire. So, and so the, the reason I'm bringing this up is... The, the bliss, the confidence booster of the cup versus his typical issues with extreme pressure. So like the 12 and three, like he, some of those wins, some of those losses in the three were very much a just got in his own head losses. Yeah. Which not for, that he couldn't have won. Not that he couldn't have won. I'll, the, the, I'll call it the Takayasu effect. Mm which may be a little mean, but I feel like... I feel yeah, like it is what it is. I feel like I've hurt myself about, about Takayasu more than he has, so we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so now that that's gone, I'm like, is he gonna... Is he gonna, like, scrape an 8-7? and seven? Is he gonna do another 12-3? and three? Or just, like... What know. if he won another title? What? He can! He can! He can! He, he can. showed like, again. Like, like, it's like the dog's off the, off the leash now. Where's he gonna run? Well, interesting, too, just as a sidebar... Um, NHK World has a new YouTube channel called Sumo Prime Time. Sumo Prime Time. And um, they have an interview with Ichi Nojo. And it was so great to see some of his more just laid back personality. And he was speaking a little bit of English and he was a little shy. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend you check it out because it was super cool. Because Ichi Nojo is kind of like the mystery giant. You never hear or see any emotion from him. So th- it was pretty mm. cool. Any All the NHK stuff is always good because they have access to all the wrestlers. Right. Like they can just whoever they want to talk they to. They just go get them. Yeah. And they have access to the to, the, to everybody. They'll, they'll talk to the, to, the, to the referees. They'll talk to the coaches. Um, or they're not paying us any money. I don't think. I don't know how longer this commercial should go. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it's free. Go out there. Go get it. Whatever. Sumo resource is always good. And Ichi Nojo, also always good. And going to be fun to see where this guy goes. Yeah, I hope it's the start of something new for his career. So next we have Katie Bayama. Also gets an extra slot. Komasubi 2 West up from Maegashira 1 East. 8 and 7. Now, this is one of those decisions where sure it's fair, but on the other hand... The way they had to do the COVID rules, you have to look at it as they they moved the whole thing as a unit, not as individuals. Sure, there were individual decisions, but they had to look at the whole map and decide based on X, Y wrestler must mm-hmm. go here. So part of moving him there was to fix all the other craziness at the bottom. So in a way, I'm saying, Oh, you know, good for you, Kitty Bayama. They gave you a spot, but part of it isn't because they think he should be in Komasubi. Part of it's because they need to make room for other guys. Part of it, <clears throat> yes. So I feel like Kira Bayama sort of took advantage of the fact that the Banzuke committee were like, this is already going to be a mess. Just, <laughs> Just give him a spot. Give him a spot. Like, it's like they're, like they're already breaking the seal. You know, you know it's sort of just like, like we've, we've already broken out the snacks. Do you want some? We've, we opened them already. They'll be stale in a week. Just... Just eat it. Just him. eat it. So Kirabayama sort of taking advantage. In fairness, he was eight and seven at one east. Right. There which, is. There, I mean, it it makes sense, but they haven't necessarily always. Not done always. That. Not always. So definitely, definitely, he's been given granted a little bit of a favor. Perhaps we're like, well, it would suck if we, you know, if we granted it for some people but not for others. So they 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 did. They opened the floodgates a little bit. I feel like Kirabayama has a nice opportunity. He's back in Sanyaku. And he has a second crack at it. Second crack. Now, 
I do I do feel like Abi and Kirabayama, like if he had to pick people without watching, like you, there's always the feel. Like you can always tell somebody's feeling good or bad. But like Abi and Kirabayama, I feel like they're on the hot seat. Like yeah. those are the guys who are put up or shut up. They have um, the same energy. The same like I'm going to show you what I can do, but I'm also scared out of my mind. Yeah. I, I feel like this is a perffect opportunity for Kirabayama because when he was in Sanyaku a little while back, it was that sort of touch, sort of like you touch it and then you get thrown back out. Yep. And so now like it's, it's always like the second time you're back, the, the subsequent times you're back, it always feels like it's the better chance. It's you're a little better, bit more comfortable. A little bit more comfortable. You're like, okay, I've done this already. Now I can sort of just, you know, show my brand of sumo as it were. <laughs> So that's sort of Kirabayama's motivation coming into this is that he got you know, like he touched he, he, he got it in there and now he's back and definitely I can't help but feel that being at the bottom run of Kamasubi like you have to do eight wins. There's no finagling your way out of this. Yeah. And if you if you have something catastrophic like a five and ten you're going to get dumped you're really gonna far. Dumped. You're going to get dumped. And They're going to make you work your way back up. Work your up. way back up. And Kirabayama's already done that. That's the thing. He knows exactly how this goes if it fails. And it does seem that he's he is a learner. I feel like that'll be more of a motivator than a than a than an intimidator. Yeah. But still, Kirabayama, nicely done. You snuck in. You snuck in. It'll be good, this I whole like it. So, yeah, six-man free-for-all. Oh, man. It's like, it's like WrestleMania. Almost. It is. I feel, I, I feel like all six of them will be fighting at the same time. I know. <laughs> it's like they're having their own Royal Rumble. Yeah. While everybody else is, you know, doing it's, something else. We're very weirdly compartmentalized the way that it all worked. Because, like, we have all the Ozeki. And they're like, we got to show our pride. We've got to, you know, Mitaki Umi is like, I got to clear Katoban. And then Takakejo is, I got to keep this pride. And then Shodai is doing whatever the hell he does. <laughs> but he's uh, still in the group. He's still in the group. And then Taro Fuji is just like... I gotta, I gotta clean this up. I've made a mess of Ugh, this. What, what is happening? What, what here? is this? Uh, and then we go down to, then we go down to the the Sanyaku, who it's just a, it is just WrestleMania thirty five. Yeah, you've got six, six man tag, six, six man tag team mess. There's just no room in the ring. So let's let's pair some guys up. So Kiribayama and Abi, um, Daie Shoichi Nojo and Wakataka Kage Hoshiryu. Yeah. And they're they're kind of they're good pairings, despite the fact that Ichinojo is a little off on his own. A little bit. But uh, it should be interesting to see which two prevail, and all it that. Does, it's it's feeling like you know those 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 like those big cash shown in anime fights where everybody pairs off and it's like a one on one fight just all yeah, over the place. Yeah, this is so Japanese right yeah, now. Yeah, it's like it's like here's the episode where dude with sword fights rival dude with sword, and then here's the episode where there's the guy who's fighting against his weakness, but he's really really strong. It's it's oh man. <sighs> Oh man, I can. Uh, so we're many not, tropes. We're not even. We're not even out of the top ranks, and I'm already off. Off well, on it. I mean, let's look at <laughs> Maiga Shira one. Okay, I mean, come wa- on. Here we go. This yeah. is this is some. This is where I was like, what? Okay, this one I needed to think through. This I had to get out the calculator, like you said. You needed the. I needed to get out the math book on this. Yeah, chunk. both of them. So especially Maiga Shira one west. What, one west, I have no clue on, but one east, I at least I've got a bead on it. So, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, okay. Tobizaru, we know that he's had favorable the favor, movements on the Von the K before. He must be friends with the Don. You know, uh, yeah. our good friend Kakuyu. <laughs> and he must ask a lot of favors. And he must do a lot to uh, keep getting his favors. But anyway, he went up a lot. Now, part of that is... Because once all these guys get promoted into Sanyaku, you got to fill the spots. Yes. But who you choose is kind of like, whoa. Yeah. So here's the thing. We've got, so looking at it, we have people coming up. We've got Kirabayama and Ichinojo going up. So that's two slots open. We have Takanosho, terrible time, going down, way down because he got injured. And because he got injured and it wasn't COVID, then... It's like punishment time. It's, it's, it's punishment time. You're, you're out. So we've got, and then we've got a lot of COVID and people with other people with Makakoshi. So we have this hole. And so Toby Zaru got, before COVID robbed us of the remaining four days of his tournament. That's true. He got his Kachikoshi early. And I feel like the fact that he got Kachikoshi and then got COVID was some sort of a multiplying factor in terms of how heavily they bumped him up. Also... 
at Megashira 6 West's old rank, he was the first person in the roster with eight wins who was not promoted to Sanyaku. Everybody else either COVID close to or Makakoshi. So mathematically, he is the highest ranked person simply because nobody else is there to fill the spot. Very good math skills there, John. Cause, I, uh, I, this is this is what excited me. You give me a math equation, I'll go. I'll go. My mind was going. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. I had to again. Like, I, I. <laughs> this was the one-two punch. You had sent me the message like the Bonzu case up, um, and I told you I was like, I'll, I'll go look at it later. And then of course I could snuck a peek, and then I saw I saw <laughs> the extra Sanyaku slots, and I'm just like, ooh, exciting. They opened up the Sanyaku. My brain's already going with the implications. Then I see Toby Zaro. My brain dumps. I'm like, what? <laughs> Hang on, <laughs> hang on. These Sanyaku slots, these are these are unheard of. But this is this is where did this come from? <laughs> is Toby Zara really a Magashira one? <laughs> it's yeah. It's like in math, like when they first introduce letters, you're like, this this letters. is math. This is math, not English. What's going on? It's, it, that, my brain just had to rewire it. So anyway, so Toby Zaro, regardless of how he got there, which was a, a bit of a journey, um, Toby Zaro, I don't think. You're gonna enjoy being at no. one. <laughs> I I do not have positive feelings about this. I mean, it'll be cool for him because yeah. he'll get to fight guys he never gets to fight. But I'm not expecting uh, an eight win uh, situation. I will give him all the credit for getting there on on his own. Like even in a regular tournament. Keep in mind, he was at he was eight and what was it, eight and three, eight and four, eight and four when they yeah. I mean, the you got to give him credit for that. So. He was and he was already fighting really well, and for a moment he looked like he was like going to be in contention. And so now he, this was six west, so he's like just shy of that log jam meat grinder top five. And so like he was positioning like he was going to sort of mosey his way in like to the fours fives, and then sort of travel there. But now they just threw him all the way up. <laughs> they just threw him all the way up. So seems kind of cruel. I, well, this is we're going to get to cruelty when we talk to Midori oh, yeah, Fuji. Yeah, uh, but. <laughs> Like for Toby Zaro, which is very interesting. You sort of earned it. You sort of been gifted it. Um, whatever you, you were like, they just threw the monkey, and he flew through the air. And so I'm looking at him. I'm like, it's he's probably not going to come out on this unscathed, but he's going to bring so much fun to this already crazy everything else we just talked about. He just needs to go into the hyperbolic time he chamber <laughs> and train for a year. He needs a year. It'll be fine. And he'll be fine. He'll be the comeback kid story of the year. Absolutely. He wild. has an amazing opportunity to be like the thing that everybody's talking about. It's he's I feel like he's just as much of a wild factor of a wild card, of a foil, of a you thought you had what was going on and then Toby Zaro fought you yeah. as he was before. I still see that double-digit loss in his record, but I think like those five or six wins that he does scrape are going to be wild. Yeah, and he'll he'll be he'll be so pumped up what? just oh. because he's going to fight yeah. guys that he may not ever fight again. No. Like yeah. this is a chance. It's so it's like time is the one currency that you can never get back. Or you get it back. And in sumo, like other sports, that time, that currency is very, very short. This could be his one and only chance to fight these guys, to be in this role. He needs to take every advantage that he can. It's, it's going to be it's gonna be fun. It's going to be crazy. But and like not. There was, there, was that, there was that infinitesimally small chance he does something absolutely wild and runs away with it. I'm and, like, like a fraction of a percent, but it's there. And then we can just, like, remember this crazy moment forever. Like, there's a couple tournaments that I still have recorded that when <laughs> I need to be cheered up, I go back and watch them. So um, I hope this tournament will be one of them. Th there, there are some moments that are, like, this moment can happen. And Toby Zaro is in a few of those. Yes. Now, if you really want to talk about insanity, <laughs> this... <laughs> ah, I can't even talk about this. Midori Fuji... Is Maegashira 1 West. Up from Maegashira 11 West. Take away for a second the giant leap. Okay? And think about the fact that this very tiny man. Uh -huh. Who was just in Jurio not long ago. Is Maegashira 1 West. What in the name <laughs> is going to happen? I am praying for his health and safety. Every day I'm going to be like, you know, what... What the, the, the sumo deity of please don't kill him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I'm like, I saw that. And like 
most of the explanations for why he got there that I did for Toby Zara will apply to him. Okay. A little like the, the ten and five. I feel like there's a little bit of maybe outside help. Maybe he called in a little bit of favors to get up that high. But there is. Uh, I feel I feel like a volleyball spike is about to hit. I mean, is him. this really a favor for him? I don't. <laughs> I mean, we were just talking about you know time as a currency. Oh boy, Midori Fuji. I most certainly think he's never going to be this high up again. Unless he shows me something I don't know that he has. He is he is the small man king in terms of the top and that um much stronger than, you know, previous small yeah, sumo yeah, guys. Well, str- like you have well b- basically the other ones would be Koto Eko and Teretsu Yoshi. Still good, still fun, but Midori Fuji does seem to be more of the complete package. So like if yes. we are going to put a tiny man. I don't think Ur is tiny anymore. I think he's just short because he's big. Yeah, they keep talking about him being tiny. Like, he he's to, not tiny. Ura used to be tiny. He exactly. bulked up. So Midoriya Fuji's like the actual like tiny man of the top division. And so like if you're gonna put any tiny man in the top division this far up, Midori Fuji is your man. Um, I still don't. I I like. Please don't get injured, Midori Fuji. Please. I know. Like don't, we don't like, want to lose you for don't, a two years or something. D- if if you think that yeah, knock on wood. Yeah, knock on wood. If you think that Ichi Nojo is going to do that Yori Taoshi right on you, just step out. Just step out, please. Just lose. <laughs> just, just lose. You know what? Taka Keisho, with all of his Ozeki pride, he just loses when he needs to lose. Yeah, it's fine. It's you fine. have a career to keep. Yeah, yeah. Midori, if you see if you see five hundred pounds of Yokozuna about to crush you into the actually, wait a minute, he's not going to fight him. Same dojo. We're safe. Yes. We're safe. I was going to say he has the factor of he does not have to fight Terano. Doesn't Fuji. have to fight Terano Fuji. Oh, okay. We're good now. <laughs> so he gets all the benefit of training with Terano Fuji, and none of the downside of having to fight not him in a tournament, him, unless it's a playoff. Unless it's a play. Well, I'm always going to say it. Come on. Could we have such a wild oh, thing? Can you imagine Midori Fuji versus Terano Fuji for a playoff decider on the last He day? would have to do a leg pick. <laughs> and it wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no. Imagine Turchi Yoshi leg picks for the Yoshi. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. If anybody loses uh, to Terano Fuji with the leg pick, it's their fault. It is their fault. Oh, so um, this anyway. this is one of the wilder things. We really have to keep an eye on this. I hope he isn't like injured in the third match. I, I'm knocking I, on wood again. Uh, just, just I want to see. I want to see this. If this is a thing, I want to see this all the way through. It's a spectacle, sir. Um, I I feel like somebody's gonna get embarrassed by Midori Fuji. Like somebody, you know. Like I'll, I'll pick on Abi. Abi's gonna get the the kataskashi. Oh, like somebody. So yeah, like, maybe it won't be Abi, but somebody up here who should like finger quotes should know better is gonna get Midori Fuji's, and that's gonna be fun. <laughs> and then for the rest for the rest of the tournament, I'm like, dear God, please keep all of your bones inside of your body. <laughs> yeah, we all know the reason Enho can't come back up is because he just got destroyed he after got a while. So we'll see. I. Mm. Mm, bit of a train wreck coming, maybe. But, but well done, Midori Fuji. One West. Yes, and I'm sure Terano Fuji will be keeping a close eye. Close eye. So next we have Kota Nawaka. He maintains the same rank. He was another COVID. He was in it at the end. You know, he was in the conversation to be in the tournament. Very big disappointment. But if we think about positive things, Kota Nawaka looks like He's becoming the wrestler that everybody was hyping. Yeah, so he was, I would say he was in contention. He was 7-3 and three when COVID got to him. So if he had won out, he would have tied for the U show. Yes. And I feel like he could have won out. I am I was a little upset to see Kota Nawaka not bumped up. That was I, the, had, yeah. I had to think through this and that they made the rule that if you didn't get eight wins because of COVID, we're keeping your rank. So we have things like Daesho, who was 6-6 six and six when they pulled him. So they're like, we'll give you the new rank. We'll, we'll keep you in Sekiwaki, but it'll be Sekiwaki 2, and that'll be the compromise because of COVID. So sort of the pendulum has to swing both ways. You can't go to... If you're going to die a show and saying, you didn't get the opportunity to get eight wins, we're not going to demote you. You can't go to Kota Nawaka and say, well, it looked like you're going to get eight wins, so we'll promote you as if. It, so I, you have yeah. to take... And now this is personal bias of that finally seeing Kota Nawaka just like on a rip doing really well but then not seeing anything for it but sort of like to what you said optimistically he was on a rip at two east 
Yeah, and you know what they could have done is put Kota Nawaka into Maegashira one west and put Midori Fuji in Maegashira two east. I mean, it's well, it's, it's like, tough because he's feel, actually got a winning score. Yeah, that's the, like yeah. I feel like the, the the fact that they're staying for the most part consistent and how they're handling COVID. Like I feel like that's really good that they're like yeah. here's the rules. We're gonna stick with them, and if things get a little weird, then we'll just figure it out. Like that. I feel like this is about as good as you'll get it. Yeah. Considering everything going on. So any any personal, I'll say, hopes for Kota Nawaka getting a bump up despite not getting it wins. I'm like, okay, fine. Well, I will, I will exchange Kota Nawaka getting one west for the fact that we're going to be treating almost everybody else the same way, the same way unless there's some situation. And they did this. This is props to the Banzuke, props to the Sumo Association for treating this so consistently, so reliably, and then it's not shady. Mm-hmm. And the only time that there was the bump down, like Ichinojo went down the rank, even though he had COVID in July, but that was because it was such crowded log jams. You're like, you can see why. They had to do something, but they didn't do anything that was like super, super unfair. Yes. They're keeping it fair. They're keeping it. They're trying to be as even about this as possible. I feel like in a, particularly when you have some weird things going on and that's sort of like, like the underlying nature of the sport, like the fact that this is so clear cut, I'm like, thank goodness. Okay. But anyway, Kota Nawaka, he's going to just tear everybody up. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, forget the Sanyaku for a second. Kota Nawaka could be in the Sanyaku right now, if not for COVID. If not for COVID. Yeah. And I so, feel- I mean, you almost have a seventh man who's coming in. I, this this is what I was saying about, like, we already have we already have six people in a four-slot Sanyaku. Then we have Kota Nawaka, and then we're going to talk about Meisei, maybe Ura. I feel a little premature. Takiyasu, who has finally woken up. It's. I mean, this was a log jam before this all mess happened, and this is why they they took the salt shaker and they sprinkled it all over the place. Mm-hmm. But the results are the same. Like regardless of what rank you are, there's still the log jam of there's these guys lo- are not that far away from yeah. just taking the yeah, spot the, back. And also, like the level of talent is so consistently high at this upper group that it's just gonna be it's gonna be a fever pitch of just who's gonna get it. Yeah, so that does make us have to talk about Mace, who ha- was the, another guy who took the huge promotion. He was Maegashir 10 West, up to Maegashir 2 West. This is this is a good thing in the sense that Mace really belongs high, way higher. And I think it was the injury that dumped him down that low. It was the injury. And now he's like trying to slowly climb his way back. They're giving him an opportunity to be where he was supposed to be. You don't get these I, gifts very often. Yeah, the the the, the Midori Fuji thing. Like I, I still on uh, some part of me doesn't know what, what caused they did. that. But like for Mace, here's a guy who's formerly in Sanyaku, who's fighting his way back up in this tumultuous Banzu case. So Mace being there, like it makes perfect sense. He's back where he needs to be. And now this is going to be the test of. How how far has your recovery come? Yeah, that's a big thing. It's a big thing. So this is the step up in competition that he wants and that we want to see where his level is. Right. This is a good test to see, you know, how much did that injury knock out of him? Yep. If if he's recovered, then he's he just made up the ground that he needed to make up. Yeah, and, and that's that's another thing, is that normally like you would have to it would be another tournament or two before he was up here. And that's time and then risk of re-injuring and maybe something happening. He's there. So now he's back in the mix. I feel like that's where he wants to be. And now he's going to be contending with these Sanyaku slots as well. I think that he's going to be very energized. I don't know. He is kind of one of the smaller guys. I don't know what he's got in him as far as physicality. But I know heart-wise, he's going to give it everything he's got. Mm Mm-hmm. It's gonna be it's gonna be exciting, and we'll we'll see how far how far back up can he get back to Sekiwake. Right, and it would be nice. I mean, you want to reward the guys who work really hard. You it's do. that whole anime trope of genius versus hard worker that very much exists in reality in sumo. Mm-hmm. Terano Fuji is the genius, the guy who had it all, who fell to the bottom and worked his way back up. Everybody else on here, it's the same kind of thing. Like, Mitaki Yumi, genius, but 
Doesn't necessarily have the hard work. Doesn't necessarily. Macy is one of those workers. And you want to see him get... You just want to see him claw his way. Like, give every ounce of blood, sweat, and tears he has to prove that hard work means something. So, I'm always rooting for him. And I'm glad that he got this opportunity. So, next we have Tamawashi. When we say with a very heavy heart, same rank... This was the man who lost his Iron Man streak. <clears throat> this is one of the COVID rules, which I actually think they changed. Now, if you're asymptomatic, doesn't mean you have to... I think they're slowly pulling those back. That was a crusher. I mean, he was asymptomatic, and he was forced out because that was the current rule. They, they're going to preserve it on paper in theory, but Tamawashi <laughs> already knows. Like In He's- reality... I did not fight every single match. Yeah, I I hope that I'm worrying for nothing. But I feel that's a lot of what kept Tamawashi going was that record. And now, now if they preserve it and if he's fine with them saying, eh, it's still there, maybe it'll still there. But I, I can't help but feel like he woke up on that tournament day and he didn't go in and then something... Something happened. You know what I mean? Right, that, like that the meant, hunger is just going to kind of... You do! Like, when you... Ah... I think that happened to Cal Ripken Jr. I think when his Iron Man streak finally ended, like he retired a year later. So just, that's another factor. I, uh, I hope it isn't. I hope that he just keeps going. But that's something that's a, that's on paper that happened. Now, I will say in terms of his performance, he was fading a little earlier than normal prior to the whole COVID thing. Now, maybe that was COVID. Yeah, maybe, maybe that was. Already. And there was just the whole atmosphere of... You're going into work and all your coworkers have COVID. Yeah. The, How, f- the fear in the back of your mind. The fear in the back of your mind. And he's, you know, one of the oldest guys in the top division in the back. So you, how much of that messed with his mental game? True. Um, but in any case, like, otherwise, he's right where he was in July. They spared the rank demotion. And we now have a fresh chunk of people that need to get Notawood. Yeah. Uh, he needs to reach down from Midori Fuji. <laughs> but yeah, he, he might not be able to reach him. He, it's going to be a weird like. He's going to palm him on the top of his head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be the no to a grip on the forehead. He's just gonna push him down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be so disrespectful. Know, so mean. <laughs> he's just gonna be like hold his hand out and let him flow oh. his arms. Oh, please no. Oh, he's just gonna he's just gonna cuff him by the ear. Say, get out of here, youngster. <laughs> no, ah, ah, just throw him with one hand. Yeah. So I'm hoping for the best. All, all like as much of the optimism and hopes and bubbliness I can spare is going to Tamawashi. Okay, <clears throat> that's a, that's a good place to I'm, channel I'm like, that. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, just stick with us here. I feel like you know, you know, we you've done so long, so well on your own. You didn't need any of us. The Fountain of Youth kept you immortal. But like for this tournament, I'm just like, you get the prayers. Yeah. Going his way. He doesn't usually get them. You know, Tochi Notion looks like, I'm not going to jinx it. I'm not going to finish that Uh, sentence. Never mind. Or would. Yeah. Anyway, some other people who will remain (laughs) nameless um, seem to be doing okay for themselves right now for just for one tournament. I'm just going to, just going to cover the bases. I I think think it's worth it. It's worth it. Just because he's done so much for us. um, And so much for Chiyo no Kuni, but we're going to let that be again. You know, if he's really doing something for us, he would mail us some of those cookies. Oh, I mean, nice. I love cookies. Um, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe the, maybe the fruits of our prayers will bear f- something in the next few months. Maybe it'll be like a total accident and just cookies will show up at my just door. Totally like, oh, these random cookies from Japan. That's nice. All right, I'll take them. Okay. So next we have our very fun Jolly Ura. Main tames the rank. Seven and eight. Three West is very high for him, especially with the sort of attitude that he has. Like, they he did that one interview and he was basically like, oh, it's all luck. <laughs> Anybody who says it's all luck and really goes into that. There's no luck at Three West. Yeah. There's no luck. There's yeah. No luck. So his, luck is not going to take you anywhere if that's what you actually think. It's his mindset. I, yes, I agree. So to, to hold rank at Three West with a seven and eight, I feel is just, is just as indicative of how crazy this Bonzo K is as the Midori Fuji pole vault. Yes. And that, like, usually holding is, like, a mid to lower thing. And then up here, it's just too crowded. But that that is, again, everybody, like, he was 7 and 8. All these people were 7 and 8 or COVID benched. 
So, like, it's like normally they would drop you, but there's... Where are they going to put you that would be fair? You? It doesn't... Like, you can't pump them anywhere. So, Ura sort of gets a buy. Um, also, I feel 7 and 8 at rank 3 West is already pretty good for yourself. Ura, Ura yeah. is improving. Definitely. And he's, you know, just a wild, crazy man that we already love. And quite frankly, we get more top rung Ura, and that if this was a normal tournament, maybe he'd be four West, and that, you know, maybe maybe we'll, there will be a match in there that we would not have gotten otherwise. So I'm fine with it. Yeah, I mean, there's a big difference actually when you get up to the top between mm -hmm. three and four in terms of what opponents you're going to face. Particularly now that we have two extra Sanyaku slots. Yeah. That's Th there's not going to be enough room f to fight everybody. Well, that's like if he was four. That's he no he might not fight some of those He may guys. not fight all the Ozeki. He may not fight Terunofuji. I feel like they really like that Terunofuji Ura They fight. like that Terunofuji so, Ura but, fight. But like, they would have picked one of the Ozekis, and they're like, you're not fighting him. But at three, he's fighting all of them. Yeah. So uh, hopefully he's... Unless Shodan, you just save again. But <laughs> Hopefully he's content with the fact that he didn't lose a spot. I, I would assume <clears throat> he's content. That's a, I feel like that was a pleasant surprise on Banzuke morning for him. Yeah. I thought about a lot of these guys, like, when their attendants came back grabbing the Bonsuke from the Koko Gikan, they open it up and they're like, what? what? No. <laughs> Unless they get some, like, little birdies telling them. They may they may get a general idea about, are oh, you going to be doing well? Or you're not like, one of the committee <clears throat> members walks by the stable and just puts a thumbs up yeah. in the window. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they, they do the gladiator thumbs up, thumbs down. And then um, you're just like, oh. or they, you know, yeah. they do the side thumb. They do the side thumb. You're like, it's fine. It's fine. I know that when you're, when you're gaining salaried rank, you hear that immediately. Yes. But like if you get some big situation going on, anything more granular, I don't think you hear about. Like, I, I remember they were talking when Mitaki Umi was going to be Ozeki. Like, I think they were talking about that before it was official. Yeah. Like before the tournament so the, was even over, they're already talking. So like the big moments. That sneaks out really quick. But I think these little things, these day-to-day -day things, I think that outside of a general vector, I think that everybody finds out together. So it's definitely like Christmas time would, on Bonsuke would, Day. This is my guess. Maybe everybody knows all this. Maybe nobody, everybody knows all the tricks. But they do make they, ma they make a big... Oh, par by the way, another another commercial for the Sumo Prime Time. They talked about the Bonsuke in one of the more recent videos. And they did make a big showing in the video of how they, oh, they're bringing all the... They're bringing all the, the, the Bonsukes to the... Back to the stable. It's all we, it's all wrapped <clears throat> really nice, like a Christmas wrapped, present. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe that's why Bonzuke comes out on uh, Christmas Eve for <laughs> January because it's like, hey, let's celebrate. Let's cel yeah, it's, it's a celebration. But hey, Ura, please more, more good stuff. Keep the belt. I don't think we have to tell him anymore. He just knows. No, and please don't ever change. Yeah, don't, just, <laughs> don't change anything about yourself. No, be yourself. So next we have Nishikigi, Maegashira 4, 4 East, up for Maegashira 8 West, 8, 5, and 2. Got a Kachikoshi despite having COVID. So now he's climbing his way up, which was the goal. What is the goal? Into an interesting territory. You know, if we say there's a big difference between 3 and 4, how much of a difference is there between 4 and 8? Yeah. That's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to probably be the biggest test of Nishikigi in a long time, definitely since he's come back. I, for one, am relishing it because he's been really good. I mean, he's got that veteran sense. He's not some young guy. The questions are all about, like, are these guys stronger and faster than him? But mentally, he has a an advantage in that he sees openings that maybe some of the young guys miss because there's, they're so exuberant. There is that, also the, like that veteran calm that like things are going out of the way, but he's just like, it's fine. He's not going to show I'm the nerves. I'm not going to show it. I'm not going to show it. I, I am very interested to see whether he goes up or down. I don't really know, to yeah. be honest with you. I usually when somebody comes up like this, I'm like, Here, you know, here's your time. But like, I feel like this may be... Maybe another Sada Naomi or uh, when, when Chio Shoma made his break and he kept going up and we're like, when's he going down? Yeah, what, like, what's up with th this? That surge that he had, I kind of wonder if that's like, I don't know if he's going to have that energy eat as well. He might. He might. I, it's exciting. It's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of potential still left in Nishikigi. And I feel like this will be the tournament that he gets to show how high he can climb. Well, I mean, if you think about Tamawashi, he won a tournament when he was like 34. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, any of these veteran guys are capable of doing something great in a given tournament. 
And Nishikigi has that same sort of energy where you think, you could do it. I want it. I want it. Show me what you got. Exactly. So good luck to Nishikigi. We will see. Next, we have Takeyasu, Maegashira 4 West, maintains the same rank. He did it the easy way. Just oh, man. be Clean knocked cut. out. He, I don't even know if he had COVID, but a stable mate did. He, he was he was benched before any of this madness started. He probably was like, again, <laughs> why can I never fight? <laughs> can't fight. And when I do fight, I have the slow walk because I lose <sighs> a horrible, horrible match when I could win it all. Just, just chokes like an unsupervised baby. <laughs> <laughs> Feast and famine. But theoretically, he had a nice rest. Like all these people, they 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 fought half of the tournament and then spent the other half annoyed and and, and worked up. Right. He just spent the whole tournament like. Mm, no, that's not my problem. Um, also, strong work ethic shown in the Jungyo and the which and the is pretty tour. typical for him as yeah. far as so he he likes fighting with everybody. He likes so he's. At least mentally, he's still there in the practice. He's still in the world of it. He doesn't seem to be like he's trying to step out. He's pushing in. Now, you know, as the Goedo would have us know, how well you do in training is not going to guarantee success in a tournament. So I'm taking away from this that his ironclad mental toughness is still there pressure caving notwithstanding you know how you deal with failure and how you deal with pressure are completely different as takiyashi was showing us and so like the way he deals with the whatever doubt he has is at least not keeping him out of sumo so right so if nothing else if we get if we glean nothing from his lack of participation in july at least it seems like he's gonna keep going it's not right. like he's gonna it's not like he's gonna be like i think i'm done it's like he's gonna keep fighting he's gonna keep going for as long as he can I think he's going to be a great Oyakata someday. Mm, I think he's yeah. going to be so dedicated to teaching and he's going to know all kinds of stuff that one day he's going to he's going to train the next Yokozuna. That's actually a good point whether or not he has elder stock. Yes, I don't know those details. We and could, that could we, explain how long he's going to fight to. I could look that up. That 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 could be the secret cuz um Kaisei who's officially retired is had elder stock and is now going to be in oyakata yeah he didn't have to like keep fighting on he was already yeah, good so it like well talk about kaisei a little later but it does seem that part of his retirement was that he had obtained that right i had no idea that he was a japanese yeah. citizen they used to sneak that stuff sneak right that in. or it could have just been that he was for so long and they just kept talking about him as the brazilian because true that's how they handle non-Japanese people. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, yeah, that's cute. You're Japanese. You're, you're Brazilian. You're Brazilian. Whatever. Okay. Anyway, Takayasu, come, come come, crack some skulls for me, would you? There, there's a bunch of people here who are soaring high. Let's see uh, if they're up to the test. Yeah. The Takayasu test. The Takayasu test. Next, we have Takata Fuji, Maegashira 5 East, up from Maegashira 12 West, 9 and 6. This was a big promotion Typically, this is not a good thing for Takeda Fuji no. in his later stages of his career. Um, so I would expect this is going to be a one-off, but you never know. I mean, one of the interesting things about Takeda Fuji is he's in Terano Fuji stable. So I feel like that's a very high energy stable. It's got mm-hmm. Midori Fuji in it. It's got Teretsuyoshi in it. There's just a lot of like success and strive for winning. So, I mean, typically he would probably fall, but who knows? If the energy is good in the stable, maybe it's enough to keep yeah. him balanced. Got the new Nishiki Fuji in there too, by the way. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. So there's there's a lot of positive energy. I do feel that Takara Fuji's comfort zone is around 7, 8. Yeah, um, it's a little high. So like, if you're a little high, he gets knocked back down. If he's a little low, then he fights his way back up. Now, everything like that being said, everything you just said, I I would agree with that. Now that we have this new surge of energy, also now that everybody's been promoted out the yin yang, that's momentum upward. Except for Tertio but... Ooh, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll talk about people dying on their sewers in a little. There, bit. Yeah, not everything is a positive <laughs> conversation today. <laughs> well, we'll see. Tago Fuji definitely 
a pleasant sight on any day for any reason. And if nothing else, he is going to be in the top division through the rest of the year. And that's what matters when they get up to be in this age. So next we have, speaking of age, yep. Sada Naomi, Micashir 5 West, maintains his rank with a 7 and 8. This is how you defined as the Ura hold. Yes. Yeah, so there's a few people who were 7 and 8 and held their ranks. And many of them, I feel like, were for the same reason of this Bonzo case is a mess. We don't know where to put people. And you're showing good fighting spirit. So we're going to sort of let you keep it. But then pay us back later. A lot of a lot of favors going. A out. lot of favors. So Sada Naomi, who was the dark horse, and almost won it all out a little while back, and has been having a great revival, great resurgence. I feel like more than earned his holding on to it. Um, and I would expect him to continue to do well. I kind of don't know if he's going to make another run at it like he had before. I feel like that was sort of like that was the one and done. Um, but yeah, but there's a lot, you know, you're looking at this list, you're just like, there's a lot of veterans here who are really getting that fire stoked. Well, especially cause it's gotta be in the back of their mind. Every time somebody retires, like I say, you know, I've been fighting with these guys for years. So like my time is coming. I have to fight, you know, once again, this idea of time being a currency, I don't know how much time I got left. So let me make the absolute best of it. Let me like get the Lamborghini, of sumo experience in this tournament and then i'll worry about my knees or whatever else or my age later so you don't know what these guys what they're gonna do can they muster enough just can they get that key blast just charge just, just a little enough, bit, yeah. enough more energy to like graze it. it you know so we'll, we'll keep an eye on him and see what he's got he'll be a fun element i i see him maybe taking a, a win off of somebody who needs it badly it's always fun to see somebody lose to one of these guys oh, yeah. in the tournament conversation. So next we have Wakamoto Haru, Magashir 6 East, down for Magashir 4 East, 6 and 9. Not a bad fall, but you know, he had been rising for a you while mean, this is, now. This is kind of a setback. I'm, cu- I'm cutting him a lot of slack because it took him getting up to 4 East before he finally got that Makakoshi. He was that 9 and 6, 9 and 6, 9 and 6, surging, surging, surging. Uh, and then everything that we were saying about how COVID just messed with everybody's head. Uh, I'm still sore about him and the Yokozuna. And that was early enough in the tournament that that could have had a mental consequence. Right. That could have affected the rest of his that tournament. Could have, that could have just messed with everything. Um, and I feel like there's nothing going to stop him from rallying back. Like, it's not It's not like he's... It's not like... I don't see a slide coming from him. Like, there's yeah. some people, like, they'll get high and then they'll start losing and then they sort of lose that that edge i think he's just gonna pick up where he left off so like him both of the both of the waka brothers do seem to have that oh yeah i lost whatever i'm gonna fight you again now right they don't have yeah they don't have the defeatist attitude so as long as he's you know perfectly healthy which i do think he is then yeah i think he'll he'll at least get an eight and seven i don't know we don't know where his ceiling is yet where it's like oh this is too hard I yeah he we're we're finding that number together yes we're going Um, on an adventure yes I feel so this will tell us whether or not the six and nine was just the weirdness or maybe maybe we are finding his ceiling Uh, but we're we don't know and the from the way he fights there's every reason to believe that he's still got more to show yeah I I think just by the way he even took on Terano Fuji he didn't take (sighs) him on as like a scared lower ranker he took him on as an equal oh man so i'm so mad wouldn't it be great if he got a got to show the well that so at six he's probably a little bit lower down but i feel like that's the kind of a match that if wakamoto haro's winning enough he'll get an opportunity he'll get that opportunity right because people are going to want to see that they're going to they i i feel like i cannot be the only person who feels like that match was taken from everybody nobody feels yes. good about this nobody the town of Fuji doesn't feel good about it wakamoto Faro doesn't feel good about it all the judges who who decided to go with the top guy nobody no, no everybody just left that if they get their chance they're gonna say let's just do it yeah one. so like, if wakamoto Haro, like he gets a three and oh or four and oh he's going on a tear i sense that rematch coming 
Uh, I hope so. I hope so. If not, we might get something in November. If, yep. if he keeps rising if he keeps appropriately. Rising, yeah. If you get up to that four, it's, it's almost inevitable. So next we have one of the, you know, shrug your shoulders moments. Mm. Endo, Micashir 6 West, down for Micashir 5 East. 3, 10, and 2. So he got the COVID... But this was after he was failing quite abysmally. He he was not having a good time of it. Um, I feel like COVID softened the blow. So, sort of like almost rescued him in a way that they did with Mitake Yumi. They kind of... It seems like they wanted an excuse to rescue him. Yeah. Th- this, I feel like with... Now, technically he was three and nine when they dumped him down. So this demotion is more like if he was six and nine. Yeah on paper and that, that seems to be how uh, they did yeah i guess that fits that's sort of how they've been doing the math for people who are makakoshi and had covid you have to understand the math this <laughs> i thank <laughs> you john because i i would not have looked yeah. at it that way it's it, and, and again like i'm guessing maybe maybe it, maybe it is that they looked at endo and they're like we need you you're too pretty right it, which is entire like they both they're both equally they gotta, viable sell, they gotta sell tickets i mean what are you um, gonna do i am concerned that it was such a hard fade I feel like if he's fading again, I'm going to get really worried. Yeah, I mean, we might have seen the last of I, I, college Yokozuna Endo. I feel like there was that spark. He made a push for it, and now that he's fading back down, like there goes the second wind. And so now it's going to be him just coasting and on survival mode. Right, until he's done. It's uh, I don't like that. It makes me... So th- this is... September is the chance for him to be like, oh, no, no, guys, it was just weird. I'm going to... I, there, there is like he is permanently stuck on that like second or third gear these days. Like we haven't seen that first gear out of him since he beat Terran of Fuji, which was just a beautiful moment. <laughs> but like at second and third gear, he's still decent. He's still you know not top material, but definitely a good test, a good sumo. Interesting things happening when he's all together. Right. But like once he's once you start slipping into those really low gears, that's when That's when, you know, he's just getting walked out like it's a practice session. That yeah, that's when he's barely trying. That's when he just slumps. And that that hurts. It's almost worse than just It's almost worse than the slow walk. It's oh. Because at least with the slow walk there there was passion. The, the heart was left on the dohyo. Right. Whereas with Endo just being walked out, it's like, oh, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. Are you like, are you alive? Yeah, exactly. So um, we'll have to see. He's he's on the caution list. On the on the caution list to be now. He this is really high up for a caution list. Like usually, if we're on the watch list, it's because you're gonna fall out. But I feel like like for him. Like you just you just give him a push, and if he just goes down the hill, then he's gone. Right. He's this gone. is like one of those injuries that you keep an eye on. Yep. You're like, mm, please prove me wrong, Endo. Take let me take your name off the list. Exactly. <laughs> so next we have one of your guys, Aoyama, Magashira seven east down for Magashira six east six and nine. Um, not too far of a drop considering, but you know, whenever I think of Oyama, maybe it's because of you. I think of Kaisei. So mm-hmm. I wonder if, you know, Kaisei retiring does affect Aoyama in terms of him Potentially. His own his own journey and yeah. where he's gonna end up. I don't I don't mind the softer demotion on his part. Um these days Aoyama is a bit of a spark and fade, spark and fade, and he's in a fade cycle right now. Mm-hmm. So sort of like I, like if he shows up I'll be happy. That's my <laughs> yeah. that's my level. It's a low bar right Sh- now. Show up. Uh, may- maybe do some grunts while smacking somebody out. Like, really, just go through the motions. Just throw we'll- somebody out. Throw somebody out. Uh, mean mug someone. Just like, like, just <laughs> bare minimum for success for Aoyama. I feel like, and then any like, if he gets a Kachikoshi, if he does, does go on a tear, like it's just that's just more. Um, but I'm just like, just good, happy to see you. Sort of like, sort of like Tochi Notion. Just good right. to see you. Tochi Notion actually has a little bit more optimism. I feel, but. Uh, like for Aoy- like for Aoyama, it is. It's like it's just, it's 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 ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. We're just, we're just we're it's low tide right now. It's fine. Right. Don't 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 that, don't. Let's expect- not make it a thing. Yeah. Not, yeah. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. You know, the moon will the moon will move. You know, and then sometime earlier next year, the spark will hit, and then he'll get that double digit win, and I'll go crazy again. It'll be great. Just gotta you just gotta be patient with Aoyama these days. Yeah, that's what we'll do then. 
Speaking of patience, yeah, how how much patience must be required to follow Oh No Show? Because when you talk about Spark and Fade, it's it is a Spark and Fade with him, but for totally different reasons. Yeah, ten and five, pretty big jump from Migashir Fifteen East to Migashir Seven West. It, it ensures that he's probably going to stay in the upper division for the whole year. Mm-hmm. Um. Once again, we saw the spirited pusher thruster who was going to be the next great thing, but now we're into a new tournament. So, yeah. so it's so when I said the big thing that I thought of when I saw Ono show back up at seven is I'm like, oh, it's a big, it's a big rank up. It's where he belongs up at the top. And I'm like, seven's not the top, but I was right. This is where he belongs. Mm. This is what Ono show is these days. It's like. Because we're we were so used to him talking in the mix when we were discussing some of the other people. When we were talking about Kirabayama, he was always paired with him because they both had the same. Got high and then struggled. Kirabayama got through it. Ono Show didn't. Then we were talking about him and like compared to. Here's a guy who's been struggling for a little while, and then here comes Hoshoyu. Here comes Kota Nawaka. Here comes these newer guys who are sort of speeding by him. And now we're not talking about any of those people in comparison. To Ono Show anymore because Ono Show is now this middle of the rank guy. Right, that's where he is. That's where and- he is, and the injuries, the whatever issues he had, certainly didn't help. But I feel like Ono Show needs to look at this and be like, I need to prove I'm better than this. Yeah, and it needs to be consistent. It can't be. I'm yeah. gonna get a ten five one in every five tournaments. Yeah. It it feels like you, the, the the energy. The, you know, the peacock strut, like, yeah. you can feel like he thinks he is better than this. Right, but he's got to prove it. And now he's got to prove it. It's proving time. It's you almost know? like faking it till you make it. <laughs> A like, little bit. Let me strut around and be like, I am the man, and then one day I'll become the man. He'll become the man, and we feel like he can. And, like, when he does become the man, I feel like it's only going to get crazier. So, like, the world where there's an Ozeki Ono show, and he's just, like, he's just like moonwalking bound places <laughs> and stuff like that. I don't know if he'll be that crazy, but I feel like there, there, there's an untapped well of just Hakuho arrogance. I know. And you know there. that Hakuho is like like his idol, like this is uh-huh. the guy. There's that too. That's a good connection I forgot about. But so, you know, I, I feel like this is me personally, at least that we sort of, I sort of put the cart before the horse a little bit for Ono Show that I'm looking at him and I'm like, oh yeah, he's got this. And then he didn't got it. We're just like, what happened? And it was just like too fast. Yeah, too we fast. Keep, we keep gotta build. thinking. You gotta yeah. build it. So now, now I'm taking the step back. I'm like, okay, on our show before before we do more Hakuho faces from you, you know, let's see you get higher. Yeah, let's see it. Let's see it. And this is a good first step. He did. There is that sort of the yeah. He went up eight ranks, so he did get a lot of that drudgery of having to climb your way up from the lowers. Like now that's gone. You're just like, okay, now okay, on our show. Now we start. Yeah, d- don't fall into the Abby trap of being too easy to read. Exactly. They, if anybody I would compare him to would be Abby, except Abby has got better proportions and he's stronger than Ono Show. Taller. I mean, those long arms, it's really hard for some guys to get past that. I mean, if you're the good reach. enough, you will. But on a bad day, those arms will just stiff you, throw you right out. So, you know, Ono Show's got to work a little bit harder and not be red. And keep his feet down on the ground. You should yeah. never be on your tippy toes, man. Footwork, please. Footwork. Footwork. So, anyway. Now we go to Tochi Noshin. Seven and eight. Maintains the same rank. He gets the hold, but they've been doing this for him for a while now. Yeah, this is... <clears throat> this is like status quo, which is good when we're talking about Tochi Noshin. Yeah. Um, he's out of the double digits, which is very nice. He's held his rank outside of the double digits. He keeps getting extra winds of energy. Like, there's the second win that he got to Ozeki, and then there's the third win when he sort of recovered from the stumble. And, like, now we're on, like, fourth, fifth, sixth win, Tochi Noshin. He keeps finding these new ways of rebuilding himself. And it's, it's, it's like, fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I almost wonder if he's got some secret Japanese status I'm not aware of. I mean, I'd always had heard that he was going to build a, a sumo school and everything in georgia and recruit georgians but maybe something has changed and he's just fighting it out until he gets elder stock although what what um stable is he in does he have a lot of Kasugano stable. 
So, I mean, who's you might have quite a bit of competition in his. Coach, 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 coach. Uh, he's with Ariyama, uh, and then some Jirio people. These, okay. Some of these people are newly promoted, actually. So, these could be the people that. No, this some of this could be that they're like you guys can't really retire because then we're out of salaried wrestlers for the stable. So that that might be line. yeah because that's who makes the money for the stable. Uh huh. And so if 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 these these newbies, yeah, if they to start this, to get up, if they start to get up. These people might take the foot off the gas. Ah, uh, yes, that makes a lot of sense. See, you got to look at all the inside. Gotta, it's, it's all the perspectives. Yeah. Um, but very good news because this time last year we were, we were like begging Tochi Notion to hang in there. I thought for he sure he was going to be gone by now. We, the way he would this last year, the way he was fighting, we're like, this is it. Just take. We were like, we we're like, take it all in because he could be gone in a moment. I would have like switched. I would have thought Kaisei would still be in and Tochi Almost. Notion would be out. If yeah, if we went if we went in a time machine, we're like Kaisei and Tochi Notion. One of them will retire. I think we would have both been like Tochi Notion. Yeah. So, I mean, kudos so, yeah, to him for being him. able to just keep fighting through. Always love seeing him. And, and I love watching him fight Ichi Nojo. It's just so sad yeah. that they're not close to the rank anymore. Out, they're a little out of range now. They may throw one. Like, if one or the other is doing really well or really poorly, we may get that match up thrown. Um, or other things, but I'm not going to say them out loud because I may curse it. Uh, anyway. No curses no today. No curses. I've, I'm, I've already... I've already had loose lips. I'm just, yeah, I've so, had a knock on wood more than I know. two times. Yeah, I'm 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 so wrapped up in these things. I'm not really. I'm just invoking angry spirits. I need to I need to do some shiko when we're done here. <laughs> um, speaking of which, yeah. Oh, speaking of this evil. is where you really got to watch everything you I say. Am, mm. Hokuto Fuji, Magashir Eight West, down from Magashir Seven West, Six and Nine. It's not a big knockdown, but it's. Hokuto Fuji was a staple in Maegashira 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. And now we are seeing a man who cannot climb out of the middle section. Yeah, so, Hokuto Fuji and Ono Show have a sort of a similar thing going on right now in that they're both struggling. It feels like against themselves, against time. So, what's different is sort of their momentum and that Ono Show is rebuilding himself after being down for so low. Uh, and then Hokuto Fuji is trying to stem the bleeding. So he's falling down. And they both sort of hit the similar spot. But they both really need to do the same thing, which is they need to regroup. So, like, for Ono Show, he needs to sort of just, like, shore up his weaknesses. And for Hokuto Fuji, he needs to get a plan B. Because his pushing strength has not been the same since he was injured. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty confident that he's got one of those injuries that just does. doesn't heal. I think he does. I think he, he's finally gotten that 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 loss. So the both of them have a lot of... It's unfortunate because they both have a lot of work to do basically for no visible result. Yeah. They just need to do a lot of work to then say, okay, now I can go forward. Right, just to edge up a little just bit. Just a little bit. Now, yeah, so it's it's this mass, vastly diminishing returns, and that's what sort of sucks. That's so, the hard part about Sumo, yeah, being a fan, you know? It's a big Hokuto Fuji fan, this does suck. If, if he refines the plan B, like he's been, every once in a while he fishes for belts. Every once in a while he'll do a, he'll do a pivot throw. I feel like if he leans into that, we, we could see that second wind out of him. Right, if he strategically places it in, because I know his bread and butter is his aggressiveness, uh -huh. but that's probably also why he's injured. I mean, you won't see a man who has gotten so many, so much blood all over the oh, dojo yeah. and cracked skull and ripping the ear off. I mean, the guy is just a wrecking machine, and eventually you're going to go down really hard. Yeah, so it's this will be interesting to see if he can if he can. If he can hold rank at least and stops the, the tumble. And then it's sort of the longer question of whether or not he can evolve the game. Right. If, Baby if it's, steps. If it's, if it's possible in him to work around what appears to be a loss of power in a guy who's a pusher thruster. Yeah. Ugh. That's the downside of being mm. a pusher thruster. So, next we have Miyogiru, Maegashir 9 East, up from Maegashir 13 West, 9 and 6. This was surprising to me um, because Miyogiru had been struggling again. We knew he had that, you know, resurgence and was doing mm -hmm. so great not too long ago. 
I keep waiting for the pattern of, okay, this is it. Now he's going to fall. Kind of like Kaise did follow the predictable pattern. <sighs> Miyogidu is not there yet. <sighs> it's pretty obvious that he's got some spirit left. <sighs> and we know he has the skill. So this is going to be an I'm, interesting September. So there, there's sort of a, there's a plus and a minus. So for Miyogiri, his wins in July were like raw power. He was just like, You're, I'm just throwing people out. He's grabbing people out. He's bulldozing people. And so seeing that power means that he's still strong. He's still capable, optimistic. I'm concerned that Miyogiri is going to sort of follow what I call the Aoyama pattern of a spark and fade. Yeah. I Now, maybe that's not a negative. You know, maybe Miyogiri is just sort of like that. That, like, things align, he does pretty well, and then for the rest of it, he's struggling a little bit. But then it, it's a different script from the older Miyogiri that we're used to, in which he was a little bit more reliable, a little bit more sturdy, more of a Takara Fuji. He's just like, he's always in the mix. It's just a matter of how how much he's in the mix. Right. And so that sort of bit different there. How Miyogiri does here will sort of determine where that goes. Because at Megashira 9, it's, that's the comfort. Like, if you look, there's like a lot of comfortable veterans in this chunk yep, right there. Yep, just hanging like, out just where hanging they belong. Out, like, this is a good place for them. Chiyo Tairu 11, a little bit lower. You know, you've got, then, then you've got the, the Resurgers up top. You've got your Sada no Umis, your Takara Fuji, your Nisukigis. You know, and like, so around here, this is sort of the... We're we've got good enough of a challenge that you get some good sumo out of them, but not to the point that some of these crazy people coming up are gonna slam them. Right. So, like, I would feel like whatever ranking he gets here, like, it's gonna be like it's, it's gonna be like a clear reading. Like, the only thing that will affect Miyogiru at this rank is his own talent. Yep, he is sort of in charge of his own destiny. It, it does feel that way. So, like, for Miyogiru, like, this is your test now. There's a lot of there's a lot of that. This is your test now going on in this yes. tournament. It's very fitting for September. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to El School for El those. Yes. It's it's school time. School time. Although in Japan, I don't know if they ever take a break they from school. They get like a month off. Yeah. Like they don't, they have trimesters, I think. So it's like, what is this summer vacation yeah, thing? Yeah. It, it's not, it's not nearly as long as it is in the Western schools. Yeah. So... Anyway, it feels fitting to me in the States. But anyway, so next we have Koto Echo. Maintains the same rank. COVID guy. Um, he's definitely come a long way from the weird yeah. stuff that was going on where he made it all the way to the bottom and he just looked like he wasn't even there. It, it, it feels like he has figured things out. Like It feels like the Koto Echo that we're seeing is still, still a struggle, but it's like a, a struggle in the right direction. And with... Very decisive and fun wins. Right. It's there's a focus. It isn't just chaos for the sake of chaos. Exactly. It's very. It was unfulfilling. He was five and five. So it's like there's no. Cut it down the middle. Right. You don't know what would have happened. Uh, so we don't. We don't get the. We don't get the. Oh, he was upward trending, or oh, maybe he still needs to work on some things. We're getting a. We have nothing we can read off of this. Uh, now it. Wash, rinse, and repeat, perhaps, is what the answer is. And that there's a there's a couple of the people in that same situation. Daisho was sort of in that situation, but he was at six and six and all the way up top. So like the stakes are a little higher for Daisho. Right. It's, but it's uh, it's the same question, which is, you know, you're you're sort you're sort of where you were before. Now, can you prove that you're, you know, prove that if you didn't have COVID, you would have done well? Right. You start to establish a pattern. That people can read. Uh, maybe that's not a good thing for you, though. Like, if there are any future COVID outbreaks like this, it might not be good if there's a precedent of you losing after 5-5. Five and five. Mm -hmm. But either way, just win, and everything will be good. <laughs> Basically. That's, that's what you got to do. Every day, you just got to win. Yep. Keep it simple, Koto Echo. So next, we have Nishiki Fuji, Maegashira 10 East, up for Maegashira 17 East, 10 and 5. Um... Gets a decent promotion, not of the likes of some others, but definitely a worthy promotion. First time in the top division, he gets double-digit wins. Now, that, that was like two or three freebies just because of the COVID nature of things, but that's still a 10-5. Hey. And, five. and is, like, he, um, is he... I think that actually affected his rank was the freebies. I, I would agree with that. Um, is he in turn of Fuji's stable yes. as well? Okay. Man, that stable is jacked. 
gangbusters right they now. They got everybody in that stable. So, um, he's going to have a difference in opponents at Mega Shear 10 East. And we don't have to worry about, unless he really crashes, he'll, once again, he's another guy who will finish out the yeah, tournament in the upper division. Well, we have, we have somebody like Oho who gets to the top division and struggles immensely. Yes. And then Nishiki Fuji gets to the top division. He's just like, I'm still moving up. Right. It's very, it's optimistic. Now, as you had mentioned, now here comes the step up in competition. Comes with the no longer has the top division jitters. Also comes with settling into his own and perhaps unleashing the talent. Very, a lot of optimism and momentum on Nishiki, Nishiki Fuji's side. And I feel like if he can tap into that, or he's going to just keep going up. One of these days I have to uh, do a color card coordinated chart of that stable and see how many guys they can't fight because it makes it they it makes match the match decisions yeah. interesting because it's like well I can't fight that guy I can't fight that guy I can't fight that guy but yes um he's performing the way you would hope and expect in a stable where there's so much excitement and there's so much success he's not like the odd man out like oh I can't keep up with everybody else. He's doing what is expected of him. Somebody else is like that, though. But we'll talk about him in a minute. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Absolutely. We'll get there. Nishiki Fuji, well done. I, I love seeing the fresh blood just tearing it up. Yeah. Anybody knew we could add to this mix of chaos, yes. the better. More the merrier. Now, speaking of... So now we got to get into negative territory. We're starting to go into negative right here. Takanosho, Maegashir 10 West. He's the guy who gave up his spot to Midori Fuji. 1 6 and 8. Got injured. Didn't have any COVID to save him. He's been spiraling for a long time for different reasons. I don't think injury was the issue before. The issue before was training or momentum or mental. Now he's got an injury. That is just. It's not what he needed. No, it's not. He, this this is basically the same thing that happened to Mace. Mm. And now it's going to be the same. Also happened to Hokuto Fuji. It's basically the same the same pattern. It feel it almost feel like we have the inside track because like oh we know exactly how this is going to look. And that and his tournament back, he'll probably be a little bit rocky because he's still dealing with the injury. So maybe you don't see too crazy of a score out of him. Uh, but if he's healthy and fine, there's nobody near him who's going to give him a problem. No, he could get a this special could be, prize. This, this could this could be the special prize buy, as I had mentioned back when neither Mace or Hokuto Fuji got it. Oh, boy. Now I just mentioned it. Not going to lie Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. But I'm looking at this and like Taka No Show, there's like, I can't, I can't envision him losing more than five times if he's healthy. Right. But the... The question of if he's healthy is a big that's one. the thing. So like I like for him, anything that's not double digits is he's still dealing with the injury. He was the, at the summer tour, so just like his mere presence hopefully means hopefully. something. Yeah, I'm I'm not like it's it's I'm still concerned. I mean, it's still an injury, and like as we saw with Hokuto Fuji, it's just like sometimes the injury just does change the trajectory. I'm not. I'm I'm staying optimistic. I'm feeling that Takano show is still like still Sanyaku material through and through. Like say Mesa had his controversy, I which we both don't fully agree with, but we would concede that there was some weirdness. Yeah. There's no weirdness with Takanosho. He's just gonna smash you out. Right. Like there's no it's it's cut and dry. Like the fact that he's not in Sanyaku was it was all mental. It was all the 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 the, the sheer volume of competition. Yeah. It had nothing to do with his talent. Yeah, and I wonder, you know, that the stable, the stable situation with Takanosho is very, very crazy. I mean, first of all, it was a newer stable because of Takanohana. I know Takanosho wasn't there yet, but then also Taka Genji got kicked out. Taka, his brother, who is his brother? Takanoiwa. No, Taka Genji's brother. They were twins. Oh right, Taka Genji and Taka. <sighs> Whatever. They're both gone now. Yeah. Unfortunately. So the brothers are gone. The coach has changed over a couple of times. Like it seems like a very unstable place to be, and maybe that's part of it for Takanosho. Maybe he needs some like like needs less drama in his life. You know, Takakesho, he's you know he's all over the place. Oh, so. you can't you can't you can't keep that guy down. 
boy, I, I would love to see like just a stable swap for like a year to see if some of it's, these guys is, turn out different. That is a weird cultural thing that you I think stick with the same stable you, forever. It's a weird like pledging. It it's, is because like like if you were to go, can you you do like if you swap fraternities in college? Like that's not really something you do. You just leave no. your fraternities. Right, you leave and then you're like out of fraternity. Then you're out of life, fraternity life. Like, so that it feels like it's that same. It's that mentality. it's that Japanese loyalty thing. Like There's you stay that. with one company for your entire mm-hmm. life. Yeah. It's, um. Yeah, it's. I understand it. Wouldn't change anything about cultures on yeah. on the face. But in terms of performance, some of these guys would probably do way better in a different stable. Maybe. You know, but we'll never know because it doesn't exist. So anyway, good luck to Takanosho. Hopefully he is healed and we will see the Takanosho who's going to be back in Sanyaku instead of the Takanosho we now see. I am hoping for a rebound, but I'm tempering expectations with if he's not at 100%, we'll see like an 8-7, and a 9-6. and so next we have Koto Shoho, Magashir 11 East, maintains the rank, COVID compromise. He is a very inconsistent wrestler, though. He's still having that the consistency performance issue. He had like three Monoes before he went out. A lot of his matches were really, really close. And like that's a it's a talent thing, it's a physical thing, it's an experience thing, it's a mental thing. He was in Jiro for a while trying to get a grip on it. Right. And now he's back and it's still, he's still, it doesn't have the confidence to surge upwards. And similar to his stable mate Koto Echo, that five and five tells us nothing. Right. You don't no, know what he would have done. No resolution, no momentum, no confidence or lack of confidence for that matter. So o- almost more frustrating, I'd say, for Koto Shoho because we had mentioned about how Koto Echo sort of went through the long and winding path to figuring out his sumo. And Koto Shoho is still on it. He's still right. he stuck needs, in the woods. Yeah, he needs an opportunity to get on the path and see what can happen. He's not even there yet. He's like, yep. I, like you said, over in the bushes. Over in the bush. A clean Kachikoshi, maybe we can start putting those demons to rest. And yeah. so, like, it's one of those things, like, maybe that would have been July. Maybe July would have been he could plant his feet and be like, here is where I belong. So, But like, July what, would not let him. It wouldn't let him. The, the, the whims of fate. So I feel like we are robbed of this momentum knowledge, and then he may be robbed of that of that resolution. You know, like if you if you if you're winning, then you know what you're doing is right. Then you can sort of build on that. If you lose, then you know you got to keep working. You know that 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 vector. It's 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 frustrating. It is, and hopefully, I really do hope that September. I want it to be chaotic in a way that makes sense. Not chaotic in a way where it's like nobody can have what they're looking I know, for. Like uncomfortable chaos. Yeah, like I just I don't want COVID around anymore. I'm, I'm done. Nice too. Just go away. I would like the chaos of like the aftermath of COVID gave somebody a chance and yeah. they took it. Yeah. You know, that would be cool. COVID is a dead fad. Let's just let it go. Yeah, let's let it be. <laughs> so next we have Chio Taidu, Mikeshir Eleven West, down for Mikeshir Tenny, six and nine. What's interesting is we sort of had written him off to like just be in Jurio by now, and he's hanging on for dear he's life. Hanging on, clawing at it. He had a couple of pretty crucial Kachikoshis that kept him bumped up, and like that's a six and nine, and he went down a half a rank. He he got lucky there. Um. Uh, so oh no, he went down a rank and a half. Never mind, I read that wrong. But anyway, um. So he. What was nice about July is that some of those six wins were crushing victories. Just the old blast the out. old Chio Tyreo blast out. So that was fun to watch. And it was sort of like, ooh, maybe he's with a little longer. Um, what, now what we have now is the test of these new people coming up. So we've got, well, Rudin's not new, but we've got, you know, there's... The longer he can stay up here is going to be contingent on whether or not he can keep pushing people out. And the, now the power is there, yeah. But with this bottom rung keep shuffling around, it's different and, people all the time. And he's lost to Chio by because now um, Chio Maru, Chio Maru, there. Jolly Man, Lime Green Belt isn't there to give him a pass. So, well, he's still got Chio Shoma to sort of help out. The, the, oh, are they in the same stable? They got the Chio in the front of the name. 
Yeah. They're both Koto no way. There's there's somebody it's Koto Shoho and Koto no Waka. They're not in the same stable. So because of that, are they? Sadako Kake, Sada Sadado Kake. Okay. There's somebody who has the same prefix in their name and they're not yeah, there, there is. They're not some together, of that. and because that one instance, now I don't you, trust you're myself. about it. I hear that. Yeah, I'm like, I, I can't trust my knowledge I, when it comes I, to that. I have to. I always have to check. Yeah, but in any case, Chiotaru. I mean, it's he's been he's been a very stable force in the way that he fights and the way that he is. So, and he's not willing to give it up. It, well, at this point, I don't think he can. Well, because he did he did try for a little bit to do something different, and that didn't really didn't work, work out for him. You just gotta have to stick to his formula. Yeah, he's yeah he's sticking to his guns, which is just keep hoping that new guys come up that are really green because he can beat them. Yeah, like me. Yeah, her, Hira Doumi, who's yeah, the, he's gonna new. he's gonna beat him unless that's this guy not, really shocks us. Well, that's that's the thing. Like in in a way, his fate is now sort of is, is coming out of his hands. Yeah, that's true. And that's that, that's where the shake up at the bottom starts to matter. Is you know you have Ichi Yamamoto, you have Oho, you've got Mitoru, you've got Hiro Doomi. Trying to think of people who are here that weren't here last year. Nishiki Fuji, uh, technically Kato Shoho. So like, there's a lot of people here. Like he's seeing all the fresh faces, so he's gonna be one of the first tests. He's he he is a welcome to the top division man. Yes. At this point, which it, the good news for him is that he's still in the top division, which as we had mentioned before, it didn't seem like he would be at this time last year. That being said, a side effect of the Sanyaku stuff is 16 West is now the basement. Yes. There's no 17. This so time. there's no 17s, which means that he's closer to the bottom through no acts of his own. Yeah. And that's another thing he has to rely on so fate yeah, wise. There's a lot of things that he's, he's losing control of his own destiny. But hey, if he could just hang in there. Just just not people by out. Tournament. I mean, that's the thing, you know? That's where sticking to your gun sort of makes sense. If he's just like, here's this one thing that's working for me, and this is the one thing I can control, so I'm just going to start knocking people into the upper deck. Okay. I mean, hey, at least it's not a leg pick. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. Just getting it. So, anyway, now we'll go to a man in a similar position. Okinomi, Maegashira 12 East, down for Maegashira 7 East, 4 and 11, COVID pull out on the final day, but he was already it was doomed. Four and ten. Yeah. So here's a guy I wouldn't even say has a spark and s- the fade situation. He's he's just in a very slow fade, and every once in a while he like jumps up a little bit, and then the fade continues. But like Chio Taidu, he could will himself in for a little bit longer. Yeah, there's he still has the presence in the ring, the strength. It's just he seems to be losing the number of times he can use it. Um, in July, when we were coming into July, when he was uh, seven east, I was like the because that was a jump up for him. He was lower, he jumped back up, and I I would said then his longevity would be whether or not he can sharpen that edge, stop that fading that you had mentioned, the long term sort of the the, the sumo. Uh, technique fade rather than like the energy fade. Right. He doesn't seem to have energy problems. He doesn't seem to have power problems. He just seems there's there's this, this this slowness. Whatever's time is creeping up on him. He, like he doesn't he doesn't see the opening quick enough. Exactly. He still sees it and he still knows what to do. It's the reflexes. The reflexes. The ability to react is is starting to get hampered for him. So I'm I am optimistic that because these issues aren't mental that they're not physical that it is just well i guess they are physical but like it's all it's all it's all it's that split second you could do adjusting there's some adjust there's there's room for a veteran to adjust and that also means that he'll sort of float a little bit because eventually he'll hit a level of skill that there's people can't deal with him right exactly uh, this is the hope Right, the hope. there could be some the, factor. The hope, the hope here is that we are assuming that his his sumo p- power and his sumo technique in his brain, like all that's still there and it's fine. It's just the ability to capitalize it that is now being compromised. And so, again, like this is the this is where it's a different type of thing. He's not clawing on. It's just that like his you know the the water slowly getting let out of the tank. 
Exactly. And this is just the fate of the aging, especially in sports. Mm. And, you know, he's got to gut it out as best as he can until we don't have him anymore. Yeah, well, that's that's basically it. And that's that sucks. Okinomi's good. We're writing all these different tales, unfortunately. <sighs> so next we have another not veteran, but not newbie who's returning. Ryudin, Maegashira 12 West, up from Juro 1 East. He wins the U Show. Wins the U Show. Yeah, it, this is a... Sorry, you can keep going. No, I was just going to say, the only thing I had to say about him is he wins the U Show, but then he loses on the last day, which... That's... that's I don't know what I think about that, but... It's a weird sting. Yeah. Uh, so, Ryudin and Hideno Umi, in July, in, when the July Banjuki was coming up, we'd mentioned this back in july they were both in a position where they could have been promoted but they were both denied and now there's the larger story that both ryudin and hide no umi were not in good graces but regardless of the what and the why they were basically both told the same thing which is we need another catch a koshi out of you before we're letting you back in hide no umi goes six and nine that's his answer to this yep. ryudin's answer is to win the you show very, very different answers to that challenge. Pretty, pretty cool, and actually. So Ryudin, who had his his own, he had he he had the the Abi wrist slap for COVID breach. Uh, has ha, prior to that had his own issues, both in terms of sumo and also in terms of people dying to COVID. Yeah. Very dark. So this is somebody coming back feels like almost like a clean slate now he's still a veteran so it's, i don't expect like an obby like return to grace that he's going to just shoot right back up but the fact that he was able to turn it all around like overcome that adversity is a very interesting element to an already fun and dynamic fighter before he got the slap down he was really really struggling massively struggling so the question becomes in the end, does the COVID slap down actually benefit him? Because he had to work hard. He had to be motivated or he was never coming back. Did it give him the infusion he needed to do more than he was going to do had it never happened? Th this is an interesting narrative that's in these slap downs. And this is what we came up on with Abby and about how this sort of this sobered him up. There's this young wild guy who sort of just, you know, had to mature. And so that similar maturity or at least sort of mental refocusing seems to have seems to have done well enough for Ryudin because winning Jurio is not easy and seems to be going for another third person, Asanayama, who is potentially going to be in Jurio in November, which is crazy. Interesting. And then we're going to have this conversation again yes. about this whole suspension and falling down sort of rebuilds you. And so Ryudin has that element going for him. He does. And so September is going to be a big question mark for him as well. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been out of upper division competition for a long time now. Let's see what you got. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite optimistic that he's going to just take this place by storm. We shall see. But it's, what? Or everybody looks at him and be like, "Beat this old man up." Well, no, you know, it really is a big question mark big for question me because mark. of the struggle beforehand. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to like dissecting with a mic with yeah. a magnifying glass. Fascinating, and then and then just objectively to see how. His sumo has gone because we haven't seen him in nearly a right. year. Right. I can barely remember anything except for the jockey Tachi. Oh, the jockey. That was some silly nonsense. <laughs> I really hope that's gone. It, it, from what I remember, it is. Okay. So now we got to talk about something that it stung you in the tournament and now it stings you after the tournament. <sighs> it's, it's, the, uh, it's fine. <laughs> you got to channel it. It's fine. Ichi Yamamoto maintains rank 6 3 and 6. So he didn't get his he didn't get his kachikochi before you know the COVID thing, but he was in the tournament conversation. He was the first one to go down, I believe. The guy has a lot of bad luck. Oh my god, this guy's this guy needs to stop hanging out with Akua. He does. He's like <laughs> he's to stay far away. Stay far away. You you can't have them in the same room. The building will set on fire. Spontaneously <laughs> combust. I'm. He was six and two. Oh man, I was so hyped for this. But I really thought it was going to be something. It's, 
but like like I said with Kota Nowaka, you know, no matter how much I like them, they didn't get eight wins, and even though it wasn't their fault, they're not going to be promoted for a maybe, a maybe, a maybe you could have gotten the eight. No, so fine. And I'd mentioned it before. It's like if the, if making this a consistent, fair, and followable experience with the whole COVID bench, if this is what it means, okay. Well, I mean, we saw with Yu Takayama, we've in Oho, I believe, somebody go up, you know, six and two, and actually wind up with a seven and eight. Yeah. So it's not like it's it, like there's it's no possibility exactly, that that would have happened. Exactly. Like it's it, we can't if a five and five isn't going to get demoted, then they can't be promoted either, no matter how well or how poorly it looks. So, unfortunately for Ichi Yamamoto, this is like the third or fourth time <laughs> yeah. that. We go from oh wow this guy because he was a, he had like an eight and seven and that eight and seven was like a, a seven and two, and then they just threw everything at him. So I would like to think that the last two U shows had him with like six wins in the first week, and so the patterns there. So now he just needs to be able to do a tournament. Yeah, a be able tournament. to do a full tournament. <laughs> Without getting thrown to the top division or getting thrown out from COVID, it is. Uh, I feel like he just he just needs that one that runway. He needs a break. He needs the break. This is it. I yeah, predict this, September. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We, 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 yeah. Knock on wood. A lot of wood. Knock. Yeah. This is this is the this the, is a the, solid. The wood running cable, back just needs that one opening from the defensive end. Yes. Give him the gap, and he will run fifty yards. Maybe this is the time. It, I I I. <laughs> I'm vibrating over here. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm white knuckling just thinking about it. Oh boy! Thankfully, the tournament is soon. It's so less than a week. We'll have our answers way sooner than when we had to do the recap. Oh show. god, it was very raw then. Very. Oh, okay. oh so mad. So speaking of someone at least who's had some suffering, Oho, Mikeshire thirteen West gets a slight bump up to Mikeshire fifteen West. Seems pretty fair with an eight and seven. He needs to, like, put all the past behind him and start fighting. The, this 8-7 and seven is a massive moral victory. First, Kachikoshi in the top division. Yes. Because, the, the, like, he had that. He was, he was, he was what? It was, like, 7-4 and four, or 7-3 and three even. And then and he th- falls out, comes back on a rip roar from Jurio, then gets a Kachikoshi. Then gets a Makakoshi when he comes back, falls down a little bit, and now here. He's like, okay, now I've proven it. He can now begin his yeah, journey. Yeah, just like like now he's in it. Now he's earned the keep with eight and seven. So it's like from here, Oho, it's just like now, now bring it. Exactly, bring it. Foot down, aggression, and then we can have him and Hoshiryu in a year fighting, and then we have yeah, you know, that would be so hyped. Oh, it would be like the grandson of Taiho versus the nephew of Acha Shoryu. The they would young... be playing all these different all, all clips. The, roll, roll the clips. How did Taiho and Acha Shoryu fight each other? And, and, Montages. Oh, and... man, like the, everybody wants this, and so now this is step. This is step one. Beforehand, we couldn't even have these conversations because right. Oho hadn't earned it, but now he's earned it. So hopefully, we're going to see an upward trajectory so that we can get to the future. Now we have Chio Shoma, Maegashira 14 East. He did not get a hold down no. from Maegashira 13 West. Uh, I mean... He went down a half rung. It's, yeah, it's not a big deal, but it means something, I think. I, yeah, he was, he was getting a little, a little bit of uh, grace in his demotions. And mm-hmm. the seven and eight and then the half knockdown, I feel like is sort of a get it together kid. <laughs> Right, like we we've yeah. been helping you we've out. Been helping you out. Um, now it's time to like put up or shut up. Yep, yeah. he he had been. Oh, actually, when when was the last time he had a kachikoshi? Let's look at this. Been a while. Been a while. Nearly yeah. a year, and it was an eight and seven. Yeah. And then you get the four and eleven, and the four and eleven here only dops him down three ranks. Mm-hmm. So that's them saying, you've been doing pretty well. We'll, we'll give you some grace. And then he gets another double digit loss. And they and still didn't down. drop him that far. Not too far. And then he gets another loss, not double digits, but down he goes. And so so, so he's just not getting it together. And now I love Chiyoshoma. 
he's still he's still fighting it out. He's still grinding it out. He's just the results aren't there, and you know it's sort of that we reach that time. The bank is just like your loans do. Right. We're like we don't care. Your loans do. Where's the money? And that's where Chiyoshoma's at right now. And it that is sucks. It does. I mean, you you keep speculating on whose whose time is up next, and you know we just like I said I mean, lost Kaise. Then yeah. you start looking at the these guys. It's just, it's it sucks doubly because this is the guy who kept rising and mm-hmm. nobody could stop him. And it was like, what it, is this it, silliness? It was, it, was just, it was this wild and crazy time, and now now he can't stop losing. Reality has come back. And yeah, now it's just the slow correction. And they never stop bugging him about the hankas, which it's funny because I'm always on people about hankas, but I expect him to hanka, so I actually find it somewhat amusing when it gets brought up. I thought you were never going to hanka again. It's like, of course he's going to hanka again. Hanka. He's the fox. Yeah, he's never going to stop. The, he's, 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 the, he's the ancient trickster. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't tell Loki to stop being a trickster. Exactly. You, you just can't change. I mean, you know he's going to do it, so don't fall for it. I'm only giving him, I'm not even giving him an excuse. I'm just saying it is it's, what it it's is. Part of his, it's part of his kit at this point. Exactly. So don't fall for it. But anyway, that doesn't seem to be helping him too much these days. So uh, he's going to need something. A little bit of excitement in his life or, you know, some new technique or some new training regimen, new diet, something. Or else... He might wind up like Yu Takayama, whom we have good things to say about this time. Mostly positive, but still a looming but, dread. Yeah, Yu Takayama has been in the basement now for a very long time with no hopes of going upward. It's like, this is where you are. He's, he's literally treading water. Mm-hmm. And if he stops treading for 30 seconds, he's done. But po- on a positive note, He's finally gone up from the very bottom, Magashir 16 East to Magashir 14 West, scraping by with an 8 and 7, but never does it look like a pretty 8 and 7. No. It's like, wow, okay. It's it's a struggle every time. It's a it's a weird duality for you, Takayama, because um, every time you're like, okay, he's never getting out of this basement, but at the same time, he's never falling through to Jurio. Two, two of his wins... In July, were against rising Jirio people, and they were. It, I think it was Mitoriu who he just threw out, <laughs> and then it was Kageyaki who he reversed. Right, but in like so, Yutakiyama he's like just like just barely good enough to stay in the top division, and all the struggling, all of the ups and downs, and the topsy turvies, and the motivation, and the injury, and the the AQA level bandaging um it feels like it's just like when it all balances out he's just like it's just like that 0.1 percent positive <laughs> it is just barely working out it makes you wonder if he didn't have all those injuries how good he could have been i think he would have been up there yeah i mean to be able to hold on this long yeah. with having no functioning body parts for sumo it just tells it's, you we've been robbed of something special it, it does like it's it shows like man he could have he ha- he has something. Yeah, that kid it, was it's, going places. It's, it's I mean, you look at it, and it's sort of like the 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 the, the persistence of the struggle alone is a commendation. And I mean, it it is it's like you said, you know, he he miss you know he he slips for one second, he's underwater, and that it, that's just it seems like that's just his reality now. Right, it's a constant pressure that's not going anywhere not because. Going anywhere. He can't muster anything more than he has. He can't. That's so. Like his ceiling is double digits. Like, like if he if he gets Mega Shear a nine, we will have to break the champagne out. Yeah. If September turns into this thing where like Yu Takayama gets double digit wins, then we're gonna be like, okay. Mm-hmm. That's all. Super all right. Wild. Sumo's gonna be wild for a <laughs> long time. I mean, because that's about as stable and predictable of a thing. Is Yu Takayama being where he is? Yeah. Is anything in sumo. He's, yeah, he's he's set up shop at the bottom of this place. <sighs> it is sad. He is, though. Hira Daumi, Mitoryu, Ryuden. I'll still say Nishiki Fuji. He's still a good test for all of them. Right. It's similar to Chiyo Tairyu in that these new people coming up, like they're going to have to find a way to deal 
with Chiritaru and Yutakiyama because higher up are better versions of them. Exactly. It's like, if you can't handle Chiyotaru, there is no way in hell you're going to handle Takakesho. Exactly. You can't deal with Yutakiyama, there is no way in hell you're not going to... You, you can't even deal with Tochi Notion, let alone Taro no Fuji. <laughs> right, if exactly. If you can't deal with Yutakiyama. Exactly. So, these are these... It's this interesting, like, layering. Yeah, it's interesting all the stuff that's just embedded in the sumo system mm-hmm. to sort of weed out those who cannot hack it and really... Uh, celebrate and challenge the ones who can it's just yeah. in the system yeah sorry you talk you have turned into a gatekeeper yeah it's sad because yeah, i really sad, do like it yeah, but it is, it's the reality of it sometimes you just gotta accept next we have even more bad news oh boy terrence yoshi my 15 east down for my 12 east six and nine he has not looked good in a very very long time he just basically did dry rinse repeat with the leg pick, it, it became it like a comedy routine oh at some point. Five days of leg picks. I, I couldn't stop laughing. I mean, in a way, it was entertaining it for was, us. <laughs> but in another way, it's like people are making fun of you over this, dude. Uh, so this is my big question. I don't know the answer to this. So like the only way for Tarichi Yoshi to get out of this is to do something Tarichi Yoshi would do. <laughs> what is the Tarichi Yoshi answer to the Tarichi Yoshi problem? It's a Notoa <laughs> with a leg trip. So you grab the guy's throat while you're tripping him and you just slam him to the ground. Like, you... just go full on Yakuza, biker jacket. Okay. Just be vicious. I think he needs to be vicious. He needs to be, he, need, he needs to start hanging out with Tamawashi and take no prisoners. Exactly. Like, he, the nice guy thing is not working for him. Okay. okay. That's where I think he needs to go. I and like I, this. I say that with the hopes that he doesn't injure anybody. I'm not yeah. about injuring people, but he needs to get a little cutthroat. Look at a little blood. Not just, like, you know. You, just like, just a little blood on the nose. Yeah. A little, little blood on the, you know, like you, you get the, like the forehead cuts. Yeah. Like a tiny like little that. Yeah. cut. Yeah. It'll also, like if somebody gets pushed out, like push them after they're leaving. Just let yeah. them know. Let, get a little mean. Get a little unsportsmanlike. <laughs> He needs, yeah, he needs a little edge. He doesn't have an edge right now. He's like little guy who's going to go for my leg and I'm going to stomp him when he does it. You need to make them a little bit afraid. This is, is, I like this. This is, I'm, okay, now I want to watch Church Yoshi fight. Like my (laughs) part, I was, I was almost dreading his fights because I knew, because it's been the same thing. Yeah. And you're just watching the fall from grace, knowing where he's been, knowing what he's done. And short, it's like, it's like it's i'm <laughs> wheeling it's like them wheeling out something you're just like this routine again he needs to do like some wwe type stuff like he just sneaks a little salt in his pocket and throws it <laughs> in the guy's eye or you know i'm joking i'm joking yeah, on that no, one no dirty no illegal fighting no but, illegal fighting but he needs to fight on the edge because he is on the edge that makes sense it's the only thing he can do like do it within the rules don't hurt anybody but make them wish they didn't take you so, you know, not yeah. seriously. Yeah. Uh, Make them worried about what yeah. you might do. I was uh, going on to the side. So back when I did tennis, I have like a sort of a soft serve because just I never really learned how to serve properly. So people would people would come forward yep. because they can just crush me. Uh, it might have been Adam, but somebody was just like, whenever that happens to you, when you do a serve, aim at them. Aim at them because it'll be a fault. But then they'll start stepping back. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You got it. That's what. That's it. That's the strategy. So that's what we need to do. I hope Terano Fuji like takes them aside because Terano Fuji knows all about those tactics. Oh yeah. If anybody could teach him, it's his own stablemate. Come on, just have the conversation. Just yeah. Just Come right. to the dark side, just a little, a little bit. A little bit of dark side. A you know, bit. There, 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 there's you can push off a little bit. Yeah. Don't need to be completely lawful good. So we will see what happens with him. Hopefully, hopefully we see something different. I mean, the leg pick is kind of funny, but we've seen it. What else you got? So next we have Sudagi Show, Migashir fifteen West down for Migashir fourteen West, five eight and two. No COVID compromise here. Sudagi shows he hasn't been performing well this for is, a long yeah, time. This is- this is the only break in the COVID compromise is that Tsurugi Show was five and seven when he got the COVID. And the, and the number eight was actually him with, withdrawing, withdrawing from, COVID. from COVID. But they still demoted him. And they demoted him a full rank. 
so there's so there's there is one not really showing a lot of performance not not a lot of you know not a lot of collateral on that bet that's on a his end. that's a um, message sender right there yeah also the bottom of the division is a lot more going on than near the top like the top had the weird power vacuum you had people holding on seven and eight you had people a lot of people holding rank on COVID. so there was sort of easier to go up or down or be left alone but here i feel like they're saying okay tsurugi show you know we got ryuden who's winning the jurio we've got you know nishiki fuji pushing his way up we've got a lo- we've got a few covid holds already uh, so basically, the math didn't really work out for Tsurugu Show. It, I I still feel like, just from a consistency perspective, it is kind of weird that they pushed him down. But I feel like that's really ultimately a message that they're singling him out. Well, and that's like, the thing they do like to send their messages yes. even within this whole, you know, because mm-hmm. there isn't a huge difference between fourteen and fifteen. So the only reason you would do it is because you want to single him out yep yeah, it's it's sort of a get it together Tsurugi show and maybe saying look you're up and down at a jurio so if, if we're gonna do it to anybody we're it's gonna, gonna do, be you yeah if, if somebody needs to get a bump down it'd be Tsurugi show he's been put on notice this is yeah yeah they 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 yeah they they put they taped a notice to his door and he was like ah, this is not what i want no not a Christmas present for him. No, he no, he, he, he unfortunately there was the sad <clears throat> violin. Yeah, no, he he look at that in the Banjo case, just like this isn't nice. Why are you doing this to me? I'm going to my room. <laughs> I know. So um, now we can get out of the doldrums and into some excitement. Yes. here at the end of the show, Mitoriu Magashir 16 East up from Jurio 4 West. That's a nice little promotion. Nine and six. Typically, they make you work a lot harder, but with the craziness, he's getting an opportunity. Yeah, he's he did he has been sort of like poking the top five of Jurio, and so like so he's clawing a little bit. So the nine and six from four, like my my meant four and five, I would say my mental threshold for if you're in Jurio's top five, that is, you're in like striking distance right. of the top division. So I think a nine and six at four is like the absolute barest minimum. And I think if uh, Shima no Umi did not have as terrible of a basho as he did, they might not have. They promoted might not him. have promoted him. Yeah. Uh, either him or Hira no Umi, who we'll talk about shortly. But Mitoru is like so he's been. I feel like they looked at him. They're like, he's doing well. He's he's already like he's he was did some fill in performances on the top division. So they're like, let's give him a chance. Right, and he's a I believe he's a belt. I think I think all the new people coming up. Well, Ryuden's not new, but like they're all belt people. Right, you all, don't have any new no push hot, yeah, no yeah. hot power guys at so, this point. This will be interesting to see how. I believe this is his first time up. I think both him and Hira Daumi are are newbies. I'm almost sure about Hira Daumi. He um, definitely is. Mitoru, I've heard the name yeah, before, but it might be because he's fought some of those, you know, guest battles, yeah. especially last tournament. Yes, when there's a lot of space. So it'll be I as always, we enter we see fresh blood. It's always a new opportunity for somebody to like. And it's always a new opportunity to have a, you know, Mygashir sixteen win the whole thing. Yeah. Hey. We may never see that again, but hey, I'm always looking for <laughs> let's, it. Let's bring it up to get a smile on our faces. Exactly. To remember the good old days <laughs> where everything was crazy. <laughs> when all the Yokozunas were off every other <laughs> Uh, tournament. They ex- but they at least were still Yokozuna, I guess. I guess. But really they weren't. Looking forward looking forward to meet Toriyu. Yep. And now this is the biggest jump. This is something that doesn't typically happen. We weren't expecting it. Hida Domi. That's a hard name to pronounce. Jurio eight. That was the the last time this happened was Ichi Yamamoto, who was Jurio eight. Oh boy, they want to try that again. Well, and I think Oho is five or six. Basically, if there's somebody who has some sort of momentum or spin or backing or knows somebody, and some other crazy things happen in the upper division. Yeah, so th- th- there are some people who springboarded, and Hira Do Umi is the latest one. 
Um, so he he is on a he is on a meteoric rise. This time last year, September of 2021, he was in Makushta, which tells you that he must be really good. I'm feeling like this is a let's get this guy into the fast lane kind of a promotion because um, you don't want to wait too long. You want them to ride the momentum because ultimately we yep. need the new blood. Yep. So the, the, now this is again the this is a very generous Banzuke this tournament. And so uh, this is another loan put out that they went to because we had the we had we had Chiumaru who was seven and eight at the bottom rung so he was gone. We had Daya Ma- Mami who was also just pretty pretty gone. And then there was uh, Shimano Umi who was pr- like maybe you're nine but he had he was like two and thirteen it was a disaster. Right. So they go to the they they look at the disaster and they're like we're gonna give Hira to Umi his chance. Right, we're, we're, we're given an opportunity. Exactly. They're just like, this isn't really your slot. We're going to let you borrow it. I mean, if uh, he does bad, they're going to probably dump him pretty far down in Jurio. Yep. This is high risk, high reward. This, yeah, this is his. This is them pole vaulting him up, and they're, they're just going to be like, if he gets, if he gets like a seven and eight. That's that's. Yeah. Well, in any case, I'm excited because this is this is another. This looks like another prope- rocket propelled person and he shares talking about stable mates sadana umi and miyogiryu ah so he's got some interesting it's an interesting dynamic Dynamic. going on you have these two veterans who are trying to resurge and they're teaching this guy everything they know Uh and he's got the energy and the speed that they don't really have i'm 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 always like you i always like looking for those dynamics of who you know who who hangs out with who Who's and friends how, with who? Who's how, living with who? It gives, and also, particularly for the newer people, that we our focus on the top division means that we're not always following the unsalaried people. Right. So, for somebody like this, who's a relative unknown to us, at least in terms of us watching the fights, it sort of also gives you like a little sneak peek on how they'll fight. You get you know some power, some technique, you know, a mix. I mean, he does seem to be like I did look up like you you look up his uh, his Kimarite online it's like a lot of it was yori kiri so i'm like oh, you're a belt guy right but it's also exciting but for different reasons like me Toriu is the guy who's been there for a while but finally like you know saved enough to buy the ticket and then this is the guy who shows up and he's like oh burning out right he's like oh you're giving me a free ticket cool and he just grabs it and gets, just on grabs the train. It and gets on the train and so now they're both going there and it, it, i would agree with you that i think of if, if both me Toriu and here in hira do umi they both get like the same rank that I feel like Hiro Umi is going to get bumped down a little bit oh, further. Oh yeah, they're going to be like, they're okay, gonna, they're going to slap his wrist. We don't want you hanging around too long. Stick it up the place, you know. Yeah, all right. So, so we should talk a little bit about Kaise since we will yep. not be able to speak of him. Yeah, as with, a wrestler again. My boy Kaise is a retired, and honestly, like he was. He was in bad shape. He was ready bad. to retire. Yeah, he was. He's going to be a coach, which is super nice, because then he gets to be hanging out with Kakuryu and uh, all the other people wearing... Like, he always wearing the jackets. Yeah, the track who, jackets? Who was it? I saw it. Um, oh, definitely see Hakuho. Um, um, I think I saw Takakaze the other day. Oh, really? And, like in the background. I'm just like, ah! Well, you know, what's interesting is now Kisa Nosato is, you know, he's judging. A judge. he's, he shows up. He's doing the matches. That was fun. What's fun about him, too, is that he has presence. No wonder why he became Yokozuna. Mm, mm. That guy steps into a room and it's like, whether it's a track jacket or whether it's the formal wear, it's like, oh, I just feel like I got to, like, step back. But, yes, uh, we will miss Kaisei. Such a jolly, lovable guy. It's sad when these guys go, but... You know, hopefully he's going to train room. the next guy. Yeah. If, if, if Kaisei doesn't leave, we don't get Hiro da Umi back. We don't get Nishiki Fuji up. Yep. You know, it's, it's, that's the cycle. The cycle continues. So we have to do predictions. Yeah, it's that time again. So I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going right for it. One of these two. It's going to be, it's going to be a, it's going to be a Seki Wake you show. I'm going to be a spammer. And I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna do this for a couple of tournaments. Okay. I think. Takeyasu. Oh. I'm gonna. I'm gonna will it to be. Okay. So I like it. I like it. I have no reason to think it, 
but he's had a couple of opportunities, so I'm going to say this is the time. <laughs> of course, a lot of things have to happen for that to be. Yeah, the case. There, that, that's a that's a steep hill to climb, but I like the outside pick because I we're, I feel like everybody is now sleeping on Takayasu. Everybody, they are. They're not. He's not in the conversation. He's not in the conversation. He's gone for it recently, multiple times, and he's he has a full highlight reel of failing. And he is very fresh right now. He's rested. Fresh, he's rested. He didn't have to go near any of that COVID drama. That was a factor in Ichi Nojo winning in July, is That's that he right. was resting in May. And I believe, I don't know if I'm right or not, the last time he went on a run was the last time he was knocked out for COVID the tournament before. Mm. Well, you know what? Let's, let's, let's look that up. Let's, let's see if I'm right. Up. Let's look that up. That's th- this is this is this is the this, this is the gold. This is the detail we need. Let's see. So, yeah, look at that. Look, out in January, twelve and three with the special prize, then six and nine because he had some issues. So out. See these? See these mm. outs? Like something happens with the outs, but. I think yeah, I've got it reversed, unfortunately. No, no. You look, or no, I don't. No, okay. He, he was out for COVID in January. Okay, so I'm right. I, yep, you're I right. I thought so. And then in March, he nearly wins it all. And, and then, look at that 12-3. and three. A 12-3 and three won the tournament this time. So I feel like we're fresh for that to happen again. We're primed. We are primed. That is a, that, that's the sleeper pick. So, Okay. One of these times, one of us is going to be right. <laughs> I don't know if we've ever picked the winner yet. I don't think no. I don't think we have. No, no. I'm so what I what I will say just to just to clarify it. When I say Seki Wacky picks, I'm still picking Dai Show. Oh what? <laughs> oh, you snuck that one <laughs> snuck in. Snuck it in. Oh in case man. it matters because there's three Seki Wacky slots. Well, what's interesting, and then we will go. Dai Show was studying for like his graduate degree or something. And he was spending all his extra time doing that, and now he's finally graduated. That was a factor in why he kind of fell off a little bit. Wasn't getting as much sleep and didn't have as much focus on sumo. Interesting. Now that he's graduated. 100% sumo. Yeah. Just keep that in mind. Okay. Never know. Okay. Well, thank you for hanging out with us again. We didn't have a live stream like I wanted in between the two, but I am going to try to sneak one in in the middle of the tournament again. We'll just chat about what's going on in the current situation, and then we'll have our recap show. So put on your notifications because you never know when we're going to drop, and enjoy the tournament. Thanks for listening. Yeah, a week from today. It's so close. Just hold on a little bit longer. A little bit longer. We can do it.